We'll be popping on in in a minute. There you go. Hear y'all popping on in now. Glad to have everybody in the room. How y'all doing, man? Hope you guys had a good week. I hope you're having a good beginning of the week. What's up, Sir Major? I see you. I hope you guys are having a good week so far. I'm here. I ain't been on live in a few days. So I just wanted to tap in. I'm so busy working on this new hip hop documentary. A lot of time is on that right now. I'm really grinding around the clock to get that movie out. We're doing the edits right now. Like I said, we're going to have a trailer for the family in a couple of weeks. The first look trailer will be ready in a couple of weeks. And we're really grinding this film out, man. This is such a phenomenal film that we're working on. And you guys just need to stay tuned. It's so, so needed right now. <clears throat> this film is for the culture. This film is all about preserving our foundational Black American culture and making folks put some respect on it. Speaking of our culture, they had the VMAs tonight that aired. I didn't see too much of it. I know they, I saw little bits and pieces of performances. Saw LL, LL was ripping it. Shout out to LL Cool J. I saw part of his performance. LL's killing the game as usual. The little piece I saw of LL was phenomenal. Um, I saw a little clip of Nicki Minaj doing a song earlier, one of her new songs. Wasn't bad. I, I give people credit where credit is due. Her song wasn't bad. So I give her her props. Um, I haven't seen some of the other performances. I know many of you have probably watched it. I saw something. I saw a clip earlier with the singer-rapper Saweetie. Was that at the, the awards tonight where they had her read a cue card where she was trying to read the teleprompters? Was that BET? Or, was that from tonight? They had her try to read a teleprompter and she was all stumbling over the words. I'm like, is she okay? That was weird. Some people saying she was drunk and high. But even if you're drunk and high, you can read basic words. Even a drunk person can kind of read. Can she read? You know, I felt kind of bad for her. It was like, yeah, she, she seemed very high when she was trying to read the teleprompter. And look, let, let me say this. these Some of these people out here who get off, who get by with the whole overly sexual sex appeal thing. Um, look, there's a reason why they want people overly sexualized. Uh, because the minute they do something that ain't got nothing to do with coochie popping, it just falls off the rails. So you got to have something else to back that up. See, that's the thing. Let me talk to the women out here. Ladies, yeah, that was sad what I saw <laughs> of, of Saweetie, whatever her name is, Saweetie trying to read and stumbling to read that I don't even like that image for girls. So they got these female rappers and singers out here. All they do is coochie popping and all of that. And then when they start talking, it's like, Oh my God, what are you saying? And some of these niggas too. I'm not trying to throw the, the, the girls under the bus, but damn, you know, that wasn't a good look. That wasn't a good look at all. Um, and I, I, it looked like it was on BT, but the VA, the VH one awards are happening tonight. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not watching any of it. Shout out to them. I'm not, not saying that out of hate. I'm just so busy working on the film over here, but it's, it's some interesting things that's going on. And I did see they had sexy red on the carpet bending over with that same wad of money. Um, there's a reason why her handlers have her walking around with a wad of money bending over. Uh, the the handlers that be, they want you looking much as much like a street hoe as possible. That that's what a street hoe looks like. You bending over with a wad of money, <laughs> with a wad of ones. It's not even a lot of money. So they have her 
sashaying around with a wad of wands, bending over. Her little butt cheeks are dry and ashy. They love that image of us. And I'm not even trying to crap on a little sexy red. God bless her. Um, I know a lot of people are very critical of her. And you know, I, I get it. I get why she does what she does. She's like, hell. I could be a hood rat living at home on Section 8, or I can be the same hood rat and get out here and get this money. So I get it. I get where she's coming from. I get her perspective. And you kind of put yourself in her shoes. Think about it. I want all of you listening. Put yourself in sexy, because people are very critical of sexy red, of course. But put yourself in sexy red shoes. If you were a hood rat sitting in a Section 8 apartment, getting over multiple SDDs or whatever. And you sitting in there in your struggle apartment and there's a bag waiting on you. All you got to do is act the same way, but in front of a camera, would you take it? Let's, let's be real. Now me, no, because I would elevate myself. You know, some people are different. Some people are different. Well, I lived in the hood before, but hey, I, I grind and I say, you know, let me do what I do with integrity. Let me use some of my, my my intellect and my smarts to overcome the hurdles that's thrown at me and still keep my level of integrity. And let me get up out the bullshit and, and kind of come up in the game and get around some more productive people. And I'll come up that way. But some people, man, you, hey. In a system of white supremacy, man, people do certain things. That's why I'm not trying to beat up on these folks too much. Sometimes people got to do what they got to do. But damn it, pick up a damn book and read that motherfucker every now and then. All right? That's all I'm saying. Look, I know you got to get the bag. Hood rat rappers, I know you got to get the bag, and I'm not mad at you, but pick up a book. Now you got enough money to pay your bills, so now you ain't on Section 8. You can sit your ass down and read something. So when you do an interview or you have to speak, you're not stumbling over the teleprompters. It's cringeworthy hearing these people do interviews now. Did y'all hear the interview with Glorilla? She did an interview. Boy, they are talking about Beyonce and niggas. I'm like, I love her music. Beyonce hurts. I'm like, oof. God and people like that's a Memphis accent. And I've been to Memphis. That's yeah, they got an accent, but that, that was just beyond an accent. All right. All right, we can't have that. Some callers in here to see what's on the family's. Want to see what y'all talking about? What's on the family's mind tonight? We got a quite a few people in here. And by the way, though, the, we got some new root work. Deodorant coming. Boy, we got some new scents. I've been testing out the new scents. See, before I put it out there, I got to test it for a minute. We got a few new scents coming. We got this, like an orange cocoa butter scent. That's phenomenal. And we also got a blueberry scent. That's really, really off the chain. That one's going to be huge. You guys are going to love that. We got a, a blueberry scent that's popping. So that's going to be coming soon. So all my people, the root work, um, people who like the root work deodorant, y'all hang tight. More is coming. And some of you, there's a lot of backed up orders, too. So those are going to be coming pretty soon. So y'all hang tight. Um, we're going to fix that must. You will not be musty for long. But like I said, I'm going to get some callers in a second. Everybody start getting in the queue who wants to get on. You know, I saw a video clip of some Asian woman in Africa. And it was a little African baby, a little toddler. The African child was about probably one or two. And the, the child was extra dusty. And I think they put dirt and ash on this baby. And the, the child had crumbs all around. I think it was a girl. It might have been a girl. It had a little dirty little um, feed bag as a dress on, and there's crumbs around the little girl mouth, and there's this Asian lady up here doing the whole Angelina Jolie thing where they go to the some little poor village and they walk around and act like 
Mama Jesus, they run around like, oh God, look at these children. Look how, look how gracious I am to feed them. That's the hustle they love to do. So this Asian woman was giving, the child was barefoot and the Asian woman had a pair of Crocs that cost probably a dollar. And she gave the child, put some Crocs on the child. And the Crocs look like they're about two or three sizes too big. And the people in the comment section, oh God, just the, I'm in tears. The kindness is just, the kindness is so phenomenal. Dude, that's all cap. I ain't impressed by that. The, the, I, I swear it looked like they put some extra ash on this child. This child's legs were way too ashy to be natural. There's shea butter trees out there where they could have got some shea butter and put it on that baby. There's no way that baby was that ashy with, with crumbs all over. They could have took the crumbs off the baby's mouth. They could have flicked some flies off the baby. They got to have the, the little African kids looking as dusty and musty as possible so it can contrast against their um, generosity and goodwill. And that's all cap because what they do, they go, they'll go in these little African villages, find some gold, some cobalt, some diamonds, and they got a, a Chinese diamond mine somewhere where they're harvesting all of the resources. That's off camera, but they'll send the the woman out here acting like you know the the, the benevolent savior with a pair of one dollar shoes like oh look how great we are while they're getting three billion dollars worth of diamonds from the other side of the damn village so y'all really stop going for that con game because here's the thing in the comment section now we as foundation of black americans we know the hustle we ain't impressed that's why they don't come around us with that bullshit they don't come around us they know if y'all want to play that I'm helping the poor Negro go around some Africans or some Caribbeans. Don't come around us with that. Y'all need to give us a real bag. No, no, don't come around here with no shoes. I got some Jordans already, bitch. Break me off about four, five hundred thousand of them dollars in reparations. We we talking like that now. So y'all not going to be able to run the con game. But they, they run that game, and in the comments section, you had a lot of these folks over there, people with foreign flags, some of these people from Africa, sitting here, going along with the, oh, that is beautiful. Uh, God bless you, people. Oh, nigga, really? Y'all really? This is why we be going, on, going in on y'all for the bullshit. Y'all don't know that's a con game. You look at the comment section, a lot of these non-FBA folks, these non-FBA black folks are like, oh, that is so sweet. That is beautiful. You see how we all get together and everybody is one person? Stop. God. People come out there with the bare minimum and then bam, you ready to give everything up. So we got to get off that nonsense. Let me get um, Afro Elite in the building, then Malcolm the Mayor. I ain't talking to Malcolm the Mayor in a minute. What's up, um, Afro Elite? Brother, how you feeling? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? I'm good. It's funny I caught you because I just posted a video. This comes from a, a cartoon called, I think, Steven Universe or something like that. I just posted it. Just saw it a few minutes ago where it's some type of anti-racist ad, but the ad is actually pushing uh, same-sex gay agenda on children, and it's covering it with anti-racism. It's like um, a black kid and a white kid, they're playing around, and a black kid, they're both male, and a black kid looks at the white kid, and he says, we should get married when we grow up. And then somebody comes, y'all can't get married because black people can't marry white people. And then I guess uh, the superhero comes in and be like, hey, that's racist. Don't say that. So the ad is like disguising the agenda with, quote unquote, attacking racism. And I just posted it before oh, you went live. So you might be able to uh, check it out. Well, my man, I'm going to check into that. But that's how they do, man. The, the con is... If they talk about some racism against us, they're going to Trojan horse everybody else in there. 
they never just talk about racism. That's another rule of white supremacy. If they talk about something racist happening, they got to throw in, well, there was some homophobia in there too. There was some anti-Semitism in there too. There was some anti-Latino in there too. They got to throw some other stuff in there. It was racist and misogynistic. They got to they got to get a double up. They, they got to attach something on there. And the reason why they have to attach something else on there. So when there's time to rectify the situation, the other group can get a bag out of it. So the black person is harmed or a group of black people are harmed. And they say, oh, my God, there was a black and homophobic attack. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, release some some funds from the federal government to stop um, discrimination for marginalized groups and the people who are going to be prioritized are the LGBT. That's the con game they run, man. They always do it. That the family, FBA family, we this habit of us allowing people to attach themselves our grievances, that has to stop tomorrow. We should have been stopped that. That's been an impediment for us um, ever since the 1960s. We let people attach their non-grievances onto us. And then they get prioritized. Like I was downtown LA earlier. I was um, right now. They 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 got us running around in circles, getting new zoning permits for the museum out here. That's why we haven't had events. And my, my people have been texting me all this week, like, when are the events happening? And some of my employees who work on the events, they're like, damn, what's happening? So we got to get all of these permits and you know they saw how we got these events popping and the city was like um yeah we're gonna have to shave a couple of them dollars off the top we're gonna have to skim a little bit so we gotta get us some zoning stuff and then i went to the zoning place today and they told me hey, we got to get an architect to come on in and redraw the blueprints of the setup and then we got to take it back and it's a, it's a whole thing so I'm, I'm saying that to say i was downtown I went down to the zoning building for the city of L.A. Not, not the zoning building, but the zoning, I forgot what it's called, but it's downtown L.A. You, where you um, you do the appointments for the zoning and you got to bring blueprints and all that. So downtown L.A., you got a bunch of homeless black people laying around outside. You go downtown L.A., there's a bunch of homeless black people. I go in this building and... A lot of, lot of employees there. This is a pretty busy building. This is for the city of Los Angeles, and it's a lot of people working in there. It's like a huge staff of people in there, and a lot of you know citizens in there with their blueprints and you know with their paperwork, trying to get their permits signed off on. And I'm in this building. Yeah, building and safety. Shout, a shout out to Connie Collins, building and safety. Family, there had to be about. 200 employees in there. There's a lot of people working there in this building and safety. Yeah. I didn't see one black employee. That's the thing that immediately stood out to me. I, literally none, not even tethers. There were zero black. It, it had to be 200 people working in here. And I'm, I'm, that sat with me for a minute. All these homeless black people are laying around outside in this building full of employees, not one black person. Not one. You had every Latino, Asian, Middle Eastern, all, all of these people, white, you had all of these people, not one out of the 200 and something people that worked there. I'm like, boy, the game is rigged out here. They got this thing super rigged. So I, I talk to the people. They give me instructions on how I got to go get an architect to kind of redraw the stuff at the museum. And yeah, it's just a lot of running around. So I leave there and I'm driving, um, trying to catch the freeway. I'm driving up Temple Street. And it's early in the morning. I had to go. My appointment was early, so... 
I got up pretty early. I wasn't there too, too long and I hadn't had my coffee. So I'm, I was going to try to find a Starbucks and I passed like a little mom and pop coffee store. So I did a U-turn. I said, let me go to this coffee store. Find out it's black owned. It was a black owned coffee shop. Cool, nice little, you know, subtle setup. Cool little spot. It's really, it's in the cut. It's black owned. And one of the employees there, and I'm like, you know, who owns this? This is a cool, cool little spot. And he was like, yeah, the owners, there's some brothers and there's a picture of them right over there. It's some, these dudes were flaming. Right, these brothers had a coffee shop in a pretty, pretty decent part of LA and these brothers were flaming. One of them, brother had on nail polish and, and I'm not trying to judge, but I'm another thing that stood out out here. If black folks get the resources to get things popping, you got to have the nail polish and the, the booty shorts on. Yeah. You drive around in the city, it tells you the story of what's really popping. Uh-oh, T.S. Giselle got upset when I said that. Hold on. Let me let me get T.S. Giselle in here. Hold on. Hold on. I said that and T.S. Giselle popped up like Candyman. The minute I said something about uh, booty shorts, T.S. Giselle popped up. Um, T.S. Giselle, hop on. Hop on. Let me be fair. I'm going to let you give your perspective. Hop on, T.S. Giselle. I'm hot like Nevada, pussy pot piñata. <laughs> um, no, that's not a piñata. Period. That, is, that um, is not a piñata at all. So uh, I'm about ahead. to go to bed. Um, before I respond to that nonsense that you just said. Um, now, what did I say that was nonsense? On. What was nonsense? Every time I come, you interrupt me. I just want to come say what I got to say and go. Before I answer your response to that, for your YouTube fans, my name is Giselle, G-I-S-E-L-L-E. -E. That is how you spell my name. Okay? Not T-S-G is, not G-I-S-E-L-L, -L, it's G-I-S-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Okay? There you go. There you go. And... Honey, it never gave big back. Never. Okay? <laughs> Period. Well, your back is big. No, it's but go not. Ahead. We're not here to talk about your big back. <laughs> um, we, 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 it, big back matter. You can look go at ahead. the Jumbotron. It never gave. Period. Okay? Now. <laughs> um, yeah, I just hate when black people act like because queer black people are thriving in American society, and matriculating through corporate America via education. Okay, don't put down. Hold on, don't, don't put your big back up there. Now, no way, I'm taking your picture down. Now, no, hold on. <laughs> this ain't this ain't a place for you to sling bussy. All right? I'm not trying to get you cussed. It, it was. All right, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm just tired of, in particular, people that identify as, you know, any of these letter groups on Twitter that always have a problem with black queer people because we're matriculating for American society. We've been able to do that via education. It's not our fault that the straights only want to rap and shoot basketball. So don't sit up here and act as if you have to be feminine to be a black male and succeed in American society. You don't. Those queer so you're people saying that... have the education Oh, okay. I'm transgender. And you say the straight and, the, and straight people and the straight people Hold don't on. have it. I'm transgender and I work in corporate America, but my resume. But why are you slanging bussy? If you got an education, why are you? Slanging I have bussy? three degrees. Let's make it very clear. I'm a proud graduate of the illustrious North Carolina yes, you do. Agricultural and Technical State University, founded in 1891, and that's on Aggie Pride. Okay. And you and, and you have a, a the, BA in bus explaining, and you explain this audience don't have the education and the resume that I have. But okay, if you got those degrees, okay, now, why are you not working in corporate America? Why are you doing OnlyFans and slinging bus? Now check that, Barbara Walters. First of all, okay, I don't sling. But why are you wait? No, why are you slinging bussy if you got all these degrees? I mean, what are you talking about? Who said that I? <laughs> I don't sling no bussy. You said it. You you said you were a sex worker. You've been saying. No, it. I haven't. I maybe yes, in my have. former life, 
five, six, seven, ten years ago. You mean last week? Absolutely not. First of all, because these girls in this group cannot get flued out because they can't. And I'm not knocking. They can't, I'm, because I'm not, they I'm don't not. have seven hundred dollar dinners like I do. Because they don't. You mean seven? You, because they you mean don't. Seven hundred. Seven hundred pounds of back. I fly in the front of the plane. Nikki the God. Yeah, because you too. Your back is too big to be in the back of the Ms. plane. Miss Cece could never. Over. But go ahead. Those girls could never. <laughs> D Tubman could never. Honey, don't be mad at me because I fly first class and those girls fly spirit. Okay. Well, circus elephants got their own private planes, but go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Don't be <laughs> mad at me because these FBA girls, honey, are coach. Okay. CC Friedman, she coach. <laughs> Nikki the God is coach. Afro Elite is. And, and, and you're shaped like a stage coach, but go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you. Go ahead, T.S. Giselle. Uh oh, you got me muted. Oh, oh, you just took baby. It was it forever gave Coke bottle hourglass. You just took it down. Okay. Yeah, if it's a three liter bottle, but go ahead. It and <laughs> where you at? You're muted. Get back. <laughs> it, it never gave. Stop muting me. It never gave <laughs> that. Okay. I'm Tia Chazelle. Every girl's dream, every man's fantasy, and these girls will never forget it. Okay. There and, you go. And when your fans right, respond, yeah. get your ass out of here and wash that big back and go to sleep. Lord. Anyway, let me get some real women in here to, to get the energy cleansed. <laughs> we got to cleanse the energy tonight. But CC um, Friedman, yes, holler at me. If you know a black architect, holler at me because we've been talking to different architects today. These people are talking crazy with their damn prices. These folks are talking crazy. Hit me up, CC, for real, for real. Also, my black lawyers out here in LA, hit me up too, man, because the little slick shit that they're doing, man, we're going to have to start looking into the legalities of it because they, they, they're doing a lot of real slick stuff. To, to black businesses out here with little um, games they got going on. But yeah, CC, we're going to talk. When I'm done, we're going to talk, CC, because um, I need to holler at your architect. And also my, bro my brother, Mikhail, he's listening in. If y'all got some good architects, because yeah, these folks, there was some people was talking about $5,000 and $7,500. Shit. I don't know all that now. But uh, Malcolm, let's get Malcolm the mayor in here. My brother Malcolm. I ain't talked to Malcolm in a minute. OG, OG, Flex. What's up, Playboy? How you been, bro? Hey, man, God is good, big dog. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. What you been up to, brother? Yo, chilling, man, chilling, man. I just uh, wanted two things, man. I wanted to salute you on getting the real OG Red Alert, DJ Red yeah. Alert in the in the joint. I've, yes. I've been hitting him up. Yeah, I put I put the bug in his ear. I was like, man, you got to get on this documentary, and y'all finally linked up. Yo, oh, beautiful yeah. boy, man. And he's like a walking library, man. When I used to hang out with him, he used to just I used to just ask him a thousand questions about how it was back in the days, and he'll tell you, man. He don't he don't hold no he don't hold nothing. Yeah, down. yeah. Red Alert was real good, man. He brought a lot of good information, man, because you know he was there in the mid seventies, so he was around a lot of that stuff. So he he really brought the heat. So. Um, real good, solid dude, too. Solid dude, that definitely, man. All right, another thing, too, before I get out of here, man, I just want I know how you always shouting out and representing uh, Francis Crest Wilson, you know what I'm saying? Big salute to her. But yeah. I also, I don't hear a lot of people saluting uh, Steve Coakley, man. That's one of my OGs. When I when I was a young, my pops used to go to his little lessons. I, was, I used to be the young kid in the audience listening and soaking up game. He was really putting us on to that new world order the stuff yes, that he, he talked about back in the days in the 80s and 90s that that stuff is happening right now oh yeah yeah I we mean, got a dedication to him at the museum we got a little something for him at the museum so we do mention him steve coakley was telling us about the boule a long time ago so yeah steve coakley is the truth man so you know much respect man i appreciate that um let's get uh got a lot of folks in here the iron mike then I'm going to get God-like. 
Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, beloved. Love and light, our brother Tariq. I saw How you what happened to you. I'm good, bro. I'm good. FBA China all day. I saw what happened, bro. What, like, what happened with that casino situation? Did, did you get your money back? That was fun. No, man. You know what? And and you know they screwed me at the casino. I. I won a jackpot. Then they came and turned the machine off and they said it was a damn malfunction. And you know what? What's going on up there now in Vegas? Somebody hacked some of the stuff up in Vegas. So some of the casinos are down bad right now. A lot of y'all don't know. Y'all um, in Vegas right now, they um, some hacker got into the system and just kind of messed everything up in many of those casinos and hotels. People can't get in their rooms. So some, some real... Thorough hackers went and got at their asses, and I'm and good, good. I ain't mad at all. Shout out to the damn hackers. That's what they get up there, up in Vegas with that scammy shit they're doing, man. That pissed me off. I'm up here. I hit a jackpot thing on damn turning the damn machine off and talking about it's a damn malfunction and then wouldn't give me my paper. So yeah, they're getting theirs right now, which is good. What's up, Godlike? Hop on, brother. Good, Tariq. Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. What's going on? Yeah, man. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to finally speak to you. And um, yeah, you know, just going back on the uh, the documentary you got coming out. Uh, I'm not going to be too long, but um, I don't know if you're aware, but Big Daddy Kane was just on this weekend's episode of Drink Champs, and in the first thirty minutes of his interview, from the way he's talking, you can just absolutely tell that he is aware of what you're doing and he's in our spaces, he's reading our threads, he's using our verbiage, everything. And what was he I saying? say that to say, he's mentioning, um, you know, all of the original people that was there in the seventies, how we have to go back to the seventies, DJ Hollywood. Yeah, did, so he picks up Hollywood a lot. Yeah. And Snoop I does, Snoop brought Hollywood out at the 50th anniversary performance out there in New York um, recently. Snoop brought Hollywood out and Hollywood did his thing. So a lot of people are recognizing um, that Hollywood was really, really one of the early pioneers in rap. But go ahead, brother. Nah, man, like, you're absolutely right. And he even mentioned um, Here Comes the Judge, Pig Meat Market. Like, he really knows his shit, and you can just tell he's in tune with the current movement that's going on. Yep. I did feel like he, he didn't mention Disco King Mario enough, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Yep. Um, but I say that to say, like, I know you're aware of the impact this is going to have, but I, I don't think you're fully aware of the waves that you are making. Like, people are just waiting and anticipating some are even scared of this and you already yeah. know that and you know we're waiting on the edge of our seats and um before i get off i just want to say two things um if you ever come back to new york um soon i don't know if you are but um you might want to try out nadia soul food great soul food where's and, that um, is that in manhattan brooklyn where's that it's in harlem it's on okay. um one it's on the 125th street um the strip it's between Malcolm X Boulevard and Fifth Avenue. Those are the cross streets. Okay, cool, cool. When I'm out there, I'll check that out, man. Thank you so much. But yeah, this documentary, man, people are anxious on this one. The family, y'all, and I think y'all already know. I, I won't even say y'all don't know. Y'all know. Y'all know this is going to be a monster. I'm telling y'all now, right now, what's the date? Whatever the date is today. Look, when we put the trailer out, that's going to break the damn internet. I'm telling y'all now. Just the trailer. We're going to put a two-minute trailer out in a couple of weeks. And I'm telling you now, you're going to see about 100 response videos to the trailer. I'm already, it's already going to, it's going to be that. You're going to see about 100 response reaction videos to the trailer. This is going to be a monster. It's going to be a monster because, man, this is, man, this is, it's weird to even say this is the first time where we got all the pioneers in one spot telling the damn history and people act like that was so impossible to do now i know a lot of people you know a lot of these folks don't even like doing interviews like that but they they you know they know how i get down and they have respect for me a lot of these people have seen my stuff before so they were already familiar with what i do and they respected what i do and they know that i wasn't going to be on no bullshit and they knew i knew my stuff and, you know, they're glad to tell the truth. Man, 
when I see the lies that the mainstream media keeps putting out there where they are deliberately trying to erase us from our culture, man, I, I can't wait to just shut all of that stuff down and give everybody the ammo they need to shut this nonsense down. But um, yeah, but going back to DJ Hollywood, man, um, the Hollywood story, we break, we, we talk in depth about Hollywood and, you know, some of the back and forth with some of the pioneers in Hollywood, because um, we talk about the difference between the hip hip hop DJs and the disco DJs. Um, Cause there was a discrepancy there. So we break that down. There's so many topics that we cover and we focus in this movie. Our primary focus is the seventies. That's one thing people kind of gloss over the 70s and then flip into something else. They don't really get into what was going down in the 70s. And the reason why, because they, they know good and well, all the people involved were FBAs in the 70s. So what they'll do, they'll cherry pick some of the non-FBA people like Herc, Bam, Flash. And I love those guys. I, I love what they do. But there were a lot of other people who were just as, as significant that they never mention. We're going to talk about it in the film. We have Mario. We're doing a whole thing on Mario. We got a whole section on Mario. There were a lot of other people around at that time. And it seems like all of the FBA pioneers are swept under the rug. The Pete DJ Jones, very important. Grandmaster Flowers, where are my New York people from that area? Y'all know who these people are. Y'all know these names. These were people who were around. Yeah, we talk about that. We talk about DJ Smokey. We talk about, there's a cat named John Brown that a lot of folks don't know about. Who was before Herc. Herc was inspired by that guy. And you never hear about this dude. Yeah, we, we break all this stuff down. This is the real damn deal right here. And we, we're not all Latino, man. We gonna break that. We break that lie down to the damn gravel, dude. That whole Latino was there starting hip hop with us, dude. We break that lie down in so many different ways from so many different angles. Anybody goes out and tell that lie again, man, is just gonna be laughed out of the room immediately. Yeah, that's just a lie snatched from thin damn air. Is simply not true. And the, the Jamaican shit is not true either. We break that down. That whole, we got it from Jamaica. All right. That's going to get broken down. And we talk about some of the first female MCs. And um, this, this, is, this is the real deal. We talk about, you know, who was doing the graffiti, who influenced who, um, talk about Buddy Esquire. If you're a hip-hop fan, you know who Buddy Esquire is. Um, and this is the one. This is the real deal. And, you know, you're never going to see a documentary this thorough. Well, they, they might start doing them now. Because the whole, the name of the game, man, in, in, in many hip-hop documentaries, the, the general consensus is to always minimize foundational Black Americans' Um, creation of it. It's always to minimize us and to include other groups. That's why you don't, these documentaries say the same shit and recycle the same lies because the name of the game is to omit us. So they start talking about um, Jamaica and uh, just like when Kamala Harris got on stage the other day talking about hip hop came from African rhythms and Caribbean and Latino rhythms. And we just didn't exist. Black Americans Foundation, we, nothing. We we don't exist. We're invisible. You see? Now, when you got the vice president sitting up here spreading these damn lies, these lies are extremely deliberate. And it's up to the grassroots, because hip-hop, that was a grassroots movement, and it's going to take the grassroots to gatekeep it and protect it and keep the truth and integrity of it. Because they're trying to rape and pillage hip hop now. And that is our foundational black American culture. And it didn't start 50 years ago. 
cultures don't have birthdays. You, you understand? That's another thing. That to say that the culture started on one day, that's not correct. No. That's, you don't hear nobody say jazz started on October 1st, 1898. That's not how music cultures or any other kind of culture works. Um, things kind of gradually come together and they gradually become codified and solidified and then somebody kind of gives a name to it. You see? But to say that hip hop started on in 1973, that that's that's not true, you know. But that's the corporate thing, you know. That's that's them putting a little corporate spin on it, so that they can define it. Family, we're going to in this movie. We got there's so many damn records where we were rapping. We know about pygmy. There's a whole bunch more you guys going to hear about. We were rhyming way before 73. We were doing moves that would become breakdancing moves way before. You see? So yeah, this this film, it's going to be taught in schools. This is, this is a, it's going to be the one right here. Um, Imhotep, hop on, brother. Hey, what's up, what's up, Terry? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, brother. I'm I'm calling from South Africa. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Look, I wanted to talk about the the tether issue. Yeah. We also have it really bad here in South Africa, man. So the white supremacists will bring will bring over these tethers to underminers. You know what I mean? First and foremost to underminers and for cheap labor. Yeah. And right now in South Africa we're having a a conversation about about land because in my country most of the land is owned by the white 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 supremacists. Right. So we're trying to get back the land uh demo- democratically. So I think I think it's a whole strategy, man, by these white supremacists to have the tethers come in so we can mix up with them so that our grandkids um c- claim to the land can can be less. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because if you mix with the tethers and you mix mix with white people or whatever, then in like 10, 15 years, they can tell your kids, man, hey, man, go to Nigeria to get your land, or go to Ethiopia to get get your land. And this is in no way race, uh, xenophobia or anything like that. It's just that we all got to be on code, man. Absolutely. We all got to be on code. I agree. I'm gonna, I had to land your plane, but thank you. I, I agree, brother. Uh, let me get some more people in here. Let's get um K City. Good morning, Tariq. How you doing? I'm good, Miss K City. How are you? All right. I can't wait for the trailer and the documentary to come out. Um, thanks for what you're doing. It's important that we tell our own stories. So yeah. um I'm younger than hip hop and it's a lot that I don't know. So yeah, I appreciate you. And I was just curious if you've seen the Tyrese Breakfast Club interview and the DJ Envy uh, disagreement and what your thoughts. Yeah, thank were. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tyrese is on one. Yeah, that's what I think. And the dude is, you know, his, his mind ain't right. He said he was on some meds. So, yeah, dude's mind ain't right. Something's going on with the dude mentally. The dude is on one. And we saw that when he was all crying. What more do you want from me? And all of that. Yeah, so something might have happened to do it, man. You know, out here in Hollywood. Remember, Tyrese got started kind of as a kid. Remember, it was a Coke, was it a Coke or Pepsi commercial? Back in the 90s, right? Remember, that's how Tyrese kind of got on. He did a Coke commercial back in the day. A lot of y'all might not remember that. And he was on a bus, from what I remember, and he started singing about Coke. And, and um, you know, he, he's been in the entertainment business since he was a kid. So, you know, a lot of these kids, I don't know how old he was. Help me out. How old was Tyrese when he was in that Coke commercial? He might not have been that young. How, how does the nigga now? How does he now? But I do remember 
the Coke commercial back in the 90s. And uh, let me let me look something up real quick. Let me look something up real quick. Because how old is he now? How old is Tyrese? I mean, he's, he's just crazy as cat shit. Okay, so Tyrese, literally, where's that? Okay, yeah, the Coca Cola commercial, ninety four. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so he was on that. Yeah, it was ninety four. I'm looking up. I'm looking it up now. So, in ninety four, that's when he was in the Coke commercial. So he was a teen. He was kind of a kid, um, like sixteen at the time. Probably fifteen or sixteen when he did the the Coca Cola commercial. So, man, we don't know what happened to him in Hollywood. Man, they get these kids, they get these black kids, and take them somewhere, you know, and then they come back different. Yeah. So we don't know what happened, but my, but dude is on one. But if you look at a lot of these black child actors who got in the game, got in Hollywood as kids, look at them now. What's the the one who was on um That's So Raven or one of those shows? Um, what's his name? The one who's real out there. I can I, why am I having a brain fart? Y'all know who I'm talking about. The one he um um talking that doom bop ba doop doop doom ba doo bop whatever his whatever his name is. I can't think of his name right now, but he's oh. always running Orlando. Thank you, Connie. Orlando. Yes. He was a child actor, and now he's uh, piped all the way out. You know? And I just saw Raz B from B2K. He was on Instagram the other day dancing in his draws a couple of days ago. He's on Instagram in his draws looking like he's high dancing. Yeah, you, you, you see what I'm saying? A lot of these young cats, man, they get into the game out here and things be happening to them, man. Unfortunately, I'm not saying that to, you know, that's that's horrible. That's horrible. That's why in the Hollywood game, man, the dad's got to be around. When you give, when you have your children around these other folks, man, y'all saw the video where the white coach down in Florida was yelling at the black kid, cursing him out. Yeah, you punk bitch and just calling them all types of names. You stand up, I'll, I'll rock your world and yelling at the kid like he about to punch him and sock him out and um yeah the, and i think he's being reprimanded i don't know what's happening to the guy but this you know when there's a strong black father around that don't go down you're not gonna have a, a crazy white coach talking all types of slick because you ain't got to do that you ain't got to do all that you know they they do that because you know they they know that they can punk out a black child. These white supremacist suspect males get around a black child and they show all the way out. You dig? Just like that, that white cop out there who's up here slumming with them sisters. Remember that white cop out there on the East Coast, we we're talking about him recently. He, um, the one, he was um, getting some popping in the back seat of the squad car at a park. Remember that guy had got charged for... Um, injuring a black child he beat up he was dating some sister and beat up on her damn child her son he was a kid like a small kid and he knocked the kid unconscious and the the court system out there gave him a slap on the wrist gave him no jail time or nothing so he gets away with it they they get on this white supremacist code well jen carlo hop on man jen carlo hop on hey man mm -hmm. what's up Tariq? uh i want to start with saying congratulations on your new show or, or movie or documentary that you're documentary right? and as a latino person how do you feel about the documentary that we're doing um i don't really have too much insight on it but i mean shit i mean i've heard i mean I honestly say like puerto ricans claim this little like hop hip-hop thing it's not really like all of us but um you know truth be told you know i care might tune in might watch your documentary might see what it's about <laughs> right right i was talking about how foundation of black americans um, are the creators of hip hop, and um, it comes from foundational Black American culture. That's the basic theme of it. 
Yeah, true. I did. I did hear. I mean, I did do research, and I saw that you know when you guys were singing like about rap and stuff, it's about um, oppressions in in your country in America. Um, that was the whole basis, the start of that, and then um, you know. But I can't wait. I might actually watch it. I might see what it is. When does it drop? Like in the fall? Um, probably at the end of this year, the beginning of the next year. So you know, we're working hard. We're we're gonna see, but it's gonna drop pretty soon. Now, where I thought, aren't you in the United States? Where are you now? Yeah, I actually just came back from Puerto Rico not too long. A couple like this past weekend. Um, I'm here up up north. I'll say that. Oh, okay. Okay. Now I thought you were like from Guatemala or some shit. Where are you from originally? Yeah, I'm Ecuadorian from South America. Ecuador. Okay, so what was happening in Puerto Rico? Uh, nothing. I just went to go see. Um, I went to go see a U.S. territory that um, you know, their their native tongue is still Spanish. So, so um, it doesn't, you know, the indoctrination um, is not fully there. But you know, they're American in somewhat some aspects. If your if your native tongue is Spanish, the indoctrination is there because that's not. It wasn't naturally a Spanish territory, but yeah, we'll go ahead. But yeah, no, it was just interesting seeing, um, you know, I feel like I saw a couple of your brothers down there. I know it was a little culture shocker seeing all these little white um, Puerto Ricans speaking Spanish. Um, mm-hmm. And I uh, just wanted to say one thing to um, um, I'm hot. I think he's on the speaker. Like you guys, um, the atrocities you guys are committing in South Africa, you know, these white farmers are the ones that feed you Africans. Um, you guys, you should not be promoting this hatred that Tyreek promotes. Um, that's mainly why I got on the speaker because he was talking about right, white supremacy. Right. Hold on. Now, wait a minute before you get into all the, the gibberish. Now, what atrocities are happening in South Africa? And then what hatred What hatred does Tariq promote? Um, you're promoting hatred? like white hatred, first and foremost. Um, and the atrocities that are happening in South Africa, um, these Africans are, are going. Hold on. No, 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 no. You're going to slow it down. You're going to slow it down. I'm promoting white hatred. How? I mean, Foundation, FBA, I mean, you just are American. You know, you guys are all Americans. You should be promoting you. Um, but no, you're not American. You're you're a foreigner, and I come from a different lineage. So how's that white hate? That don't make any sense. How is that white hate? Tariq, I'm not here to um, you know, like spit propaganda with you. Um, I'm South American. If you don't want to call me American, I'm South American. Um, oh, he left. Look, the Larper left. <laughs> um, but I do not like this promoting of hatred. You're, you're, you're you promote Ecuador. to other brothers. You're you're Ecuadorian, sir. So you're a foreigner. But what's the hate? Because I'm asking you what the hate is. You say, you do what a lot of these wannabe Anglos do. You say something and then run from what you said. You're running from what you said, sir. And then you start babbling. What you said didn't make sense. Now you're spreading white hate. How? Because you're foundational black American? Well, not even. Just look, look at that. It's Latinos. Like, I mean, like I told you, Puerto Ricans mostly claim that. Like, you, you want to isolate yourself. You constantly do this in your spaces. You constantly... Sir, your country, Guatemala, you isolate yourselves from the black people there. You guys are horrible to the black people down there. What are you talking about? Turn your phone on, brother. You guys in Puerto Rico. Rico, in, In Puerto Rico, they're horrible to the black Puerto Ricans there. They isolate themselves from the black Puerto Ricans. In Mexico, they're horrible to the black Mexicans there. They just acknowledged them as Mexican citizens recently. So what are you talking about isolation, sir? You guys are the kings and queens of isolating the black people away from you. They speak la, 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 How the hell do we isolate them? They don't they don't get to what what they will speak English then if we isolated them. That makes zero sense. How does it, Tariq, explain? You isolate them because they are always living on the other side of the damn country than you are. That's how. You go down to these South American countries, you go to Colombia, the black Colombians are on the other side. You go down to Costa Rica, the black Costa Ricans are on the Caribbean side. You go down to Mexico, the black people are huddled off somewhere and Yanger, uh, one of these other areas. So the black people are always huddled off somewhere else in these South and Central American countries, sir. Even in your country, Guatemala, the black people are huddled off somewhere. So what are you talking about? Um, Tariq, I get your point. I, I could see that um, the Dominicans like claiming the Spanish side more than the Haitian side. I get your point. I get it. Um, that's an internal yeah. issue, though. I, you know, like I want to explain this to you. That's internally. 
Um, but to say we're all like that, it's... it ain't that internal. Y'all do it all over the place. Yeah, y'all do it all over down there. It's not internal. That's common. Tyreek, even That's in Puerto common. Rico, they're way more cooler. Like the black Puerto Ricans are way chiller down there. They they integrated there. They're cool. They hang around. I was chilling with all the bouncers there. They were mad cool. They were mad mad nice, bro. Good people. I don't know what you mean by this because I, I experienced this. So it's like maybe you need to travel more, I guess, because you said you've gone to Ecuador, quote unquote. You've gone to South America. Maybe travel again. Maybe go see it for yourself. The, I don't know. You're just kind of babbling right now. But let, we just talk about your homeland, man. The the Garifuna people down there. Where where do, where do the Garifuna people live? In Guatemala, they don't live I don't with live the in Guatemala, the... sir. I'm from South America. I'm from another continent. I know it might hurt you. Um, the Christianity side, but um, yeah, it's true. I live in South America, and there's black people too. Right. Obviously, they live. They they're from but my dad's Guatemala, town. But you're Guatemala, sir. You're Guatemala. Okay, whatever you need to tell yourself, Tariq. Why do what? What flag is that you have on your thing, sir? Uh, it's one of three countries. You could take a guess, sir. Um, uh, this ain't Jeopardy, sir. You said you were Guatemala, and you said that. So did you? Are you lying? Are you you doing what? Want to be white supremacists? Do are you lying about where you're from? Tyree, you said you were Guatemala. The truth hurts. I get it. Um, South Americans are more Europeans than you know you black Americans. I want to say, and definitely you Africans that that fucking are realists. Um, I'm sorry to say that you you're just saying you're babbling, sir, and your trolling ain't even that interesting. You're trying. This is a weak attempt to try to troll, and it's not even good. You're trying to be like the Anglo white supremacists, but you're you're too slow. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to be like the Anglo white supremacists with their trolling, and you're not witty enough. It ain't, it, you're struggling, sir. It's not working for you. It, that's why it's just coming across this mindless babble. Yeah. Tariq, How I don't you need fail to, at I don't trolling? need to insult you guys, bro. How do you fail at trolling, though? That's, that's not a good look. Damn, dude, you can't even, you you failing at trolling. My goodness, brother. Anyway. I mean, this isn't trolling, it's the truth. The truth hurts. You have, you just, you're just saying stuff. Yeah, you're not saying really stuff saying. You could wake your people up. Look how many people are in the space. You could influence people sir, for the good. Sir, stop, stop, can't stop, wake stop, your stop. people up. Sir. sir, you had to flee from your homeland. How are you going to talk about waking a people up and you fled from yours? Huh, Giancarlo? You fled from your people. You had to get away from your people. And you want to talk about waking people up. You think you're getting Anglo points, dude? The only one that wants um um like like um truth from Anglos are like to look like I'm cool, I'm with you guys is you. Nobody no no, no, listen, we're going to have an intervention. I can hear it in your spirit. You you know good and well you're not going to be accepted by the Anglo whites. I can hear you almost sound like you want to cry. You're trying desperately. You're trying to practice your anti-black talking points so when you get around some of your um, white friends at school or white associates or the white people you work for whose lawn you probably cut, hey, hey Mr. Jones, I talked to some niggers. I told him to go back to Africa. All right, Pepe, finish my lawn. You know, they kind of dismiss you. They're not trying to chop up anti-black racism with you. You think you're trying to get some anti-black racism talking points going so that you can get around your white employers and get some brownie points, don't you? Uh, no, Terry, you guys do that yourself. I just watched Power 2 episode. Um, it was cool, you know, seeing the black brother kill the poor, poor black. And you're up here talking about a damn fictional TV show. You're not witty at all. Boy, that you're Guatemala talking points here. Propaganda is not. That, that Guatemalan education system is a beast, ain't it? It didn't do shit for you. You should have got your education first before you fled, brother. Damn. You, you fled before you can get your fifth grade education, brother. You sound like. You're just not all there educationally, sir. Is this what you do, Terry? You're like just like trolling, joking with all the pe all your people in here. Is that what you do? It's cool. It's cool. But, but I, I like it's good entertainment. Good, good, good radio host. I'll give you that much. Yeah.
but you're just saying weird stuff, dude. And you come from a third world country, I mean, and it just Africa just sounds the third weird. World. <laughs> not South America. And I don't live there, and I've never lived there. So who gives a damn? Are I'm you not about from the third Africa. World? That is, your ancestors are from the third world, not mine. So you, yours too. No, yours sir, too. No, that is incorrect. Guatemala too. Yeah, Guatemala too. Did you know that? Out there in all of them South American countries, they come from this Africa is too. Sir. talking points. You sound like Fox. Sir, sir, newsflash. That's why all of y'all got a black abuela down there. That y'all come from African ancestry too. You understand? You do know that, right? You know that. Y'all just hide the black people down there. Like I said earlier, we have music where they're singing. These are popular songs out there. Maybe it's not hip hop, you know. It's not hip hop. I'm sorry to say that. That, that black people brought it's Spanish. The black it's Spanish. People, the, the music down there. The music down there in South America. It was created by black people there. The mariachi music that was black. A lot of the foods down there that's black. Spanish rice, no such thing as Spanish rice. That's black. The rice that's black. Rice with tomatoes. That's black. black? Is they cocaine? Do, is cocaine they, dollar? No, 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 that's no, no. Cocaine. They don't. They don't look. Do, do, do. The rice in Spain is yellow and ain't got no flavor. And rice isn't indigenous to the Americas. So the black folks made the rice down there, the Spanish rice. Just giving you a, a, a history on your your culture. If you want to talk about African, the Spanish rice is jollof. Basically, you're more African than me, probably, brother. You know that. All I said was Africa's third world. I didn't bring up anything else. Right. So you're and you're probably more African than me. Right? Cool, yeah, I do have some dark spots on me, bro. I'm not a dog man. Right. You ain't Spanish. You ain't Spanish. You go to Spain and tell them. I'll that go to you're my cousins Spanish. in Spain. Yeah, I could go to my cousins in Spain. Your cousins my ass. Y'all can't go nowhere near Spain. Stop capping. I know. I know. I've been all over. I've been been all over. I know it burns inside. No, 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 no. Spain ain't your motherland. Y'all can't go to Spain and tell them, "Hey, guys, I'm Spanish like you." Get the fuck out of here. I know. I've been all over Spain. They don't accept or honor your Spanish ancestry at all. Do they? Tell the truth. Let's tell the truth here today. Cool. No, you're definitely right. Europeans are racist. I mm-hmm. don't. I do not. Uh, uh, uh. So you're agreeing that the Europeans are racist. So you're criticizing me for pointing out European racism, though. So how does that work? Mm, you, you're talking about Anglo's, but like we're in, talking about America issues. First of all, I'm not talking about Europeans. Yeah, I'm agreeing with your so point racism, about Spain. Racism is worldwide. Tariq, who do they hate? Who do they hate the most? Explain that to me. Do you think Spanish hate someone specifically? Like you think we're like Europeans like that, that we follow that little realm? Yeah, we're not like that. Listen, and I'm listen, trying to listen, I'm trying listen. to just be I'm giving you No 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 because I don't give a damn about who they hate. I'm more concerned about who they dominate. See, we get into this hate thing where it's emotions. Nah. You have white supremacists who might be very nice to black people as long as they can dominate us. So we don't even look at that as hate. The whole system where you're dominating people based on race is hateful within itself. Even the people who are nice within the system. It's like a prison. You might have a prison guard that gives you extra food. He might be a nice prison guard. But the prison system is a hateful system within itself. So I don't get into that who hates the most and all of that. Who's dominating people based on race? That's what I'm looking at. Like I said earlier, guys, remember I went downtown L.A., I go into a building with about 200 people, not one black person there. And everybody's nice. Everybody's so cordial. But that's a hateful environment because it's systematic racism. The systematic racism is baked into the cake, which is a hateful system within itself. So it's not about the emotions of the people. How's the system designed? You see? But go ahead, Giancarlo. My whole point is, like, I just want you to understand, I'm not LARPing like a white, I'm not LARPing as a black either. Um, This, this is not my fight, it's not my dog, I don't have a dog in it. Um, I do want to see us, like, you know, move on, like, life continues, we have to fucking find a way to work together. And that's all I come here 
find a way. Why don't you find a way to build up your homeland and not flee? Why don't you do that instead of coming here, undermining us, talking which about we need to work together? Talk, which you are, you're not trying to work together. Me, with us. You're not trying to work together with us. Your energy, like a lot of you, is hostile. You've come in here with some of the weakest, clumsiest insults and some of your vitriol that you can't even fully articulate because you're not really that bright. You're not even that bright to be racist. And you're talking about how come we can't work together. You are the reason why we can't work together. Why would we want to work with you? Okay, Terry, I didn't mean to like disturb your room. You was doing good. Um, I just came here to speak truth for you. No, 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 no. Um, no, no it was cool. You, it, no, I just, you know, no, so people here. No, 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 no. Because we you know you thought you were going to troll and we're having an intervention. Why would we need to work with you? What do we benefit from working with you? I mean, Tariq, we we um there is Spanish Spanish Americans are the most Americans here now. Um, here's a fun fact no, for you: there's more Spanish speaking true. people in the. That's not true. That's not even true either. That's another lie. Foundation of Black Americans. We're still the largest ethnic group here. That whole thing, all these Spanish people are the biggest. That no, that's not true, sir. That's not true. There's been studies about that where the real numbers are out. That's not true. Spanish speakers are on the coastal cities for the most part. You know, primarily, they're concentrated in many of the coastal spots, um, Southern Cal, Texas, um, East Coast, like New York or Miami. But no, no, no. Foundation of Black Americans are still the largest ethnic group. But go ahead. Yeah, you're in Atlanta, um, the South. All LA. over Chicago, just the hood parts where nobody, there's no business, there's nothing to do there. Oh, people are, are well, then why risking their lives why to, could, to die. Then, like, then why are y'all flocking there then? If ain't nothing there and if there's no businesses there, why are y'all climbing gates and walls to get over to Chicago and Philly and all of the hoods? Because the the, the folks in Chicago, they're complaining about you right now. They're like, hey, it's too, y'all send them back where they came from. Hey, y'all so dumping them off the, the neighbors. Um, search up the cops that raped Venezuelan dude, migrants. That are black. Dude, why, the, the black people in Chicago are doing press conferences every week saying, hey, these migrants are doing the most. Don't send them here. We already have limited resources. Y'all not vetting these people. You got these people coming in our neighborhoods committing all types of crimes. The black citizens are complaining, sir. So what are you talking about? What are the black citizens complaining about? Please explain. Like you. Me. You. They're complaining about folks like you. Am I taking their job? To... I'm going to ask into... the black dude that works at my warehouse tomorrow. I'm like, am I taking... Nobody said, y'all, can the tether and the, the fleeing class get off this thing about we're worried about you taking our jobs. We're worried about you raping the kids. Y'all come over. Nobody's vetting you, cats like you. Nobody's vetting you. God knows what you did down in South America. And then you flock over here, the criminal class, the rapists, the drug dealers, the drug users, and they sit them right in our communities and all hell breaks loose. So, yeah, that's a problem. Right? Giancarlo. What's the problem, Tyreek? Explain to me. The criminal class among you that's not vetted, that comes among our community, wreaking havoc and then they get to slither back on if things get too hot. Um, yeah, that's Can we problem. talk about Kevin Porter, the criminal, the NBA player that hit the sister? Um, these are topics you should be bringing to light. Um, no. no, the, no. You talk about the immigrants that are just coming here to learn, the, to work, the, the, to be a hardworking no, American, no, indulging. No, the, the, the hardworking my ass. All of that whole hardworking, man, please. Come in, a lot of y'all coming over here committing all types of crime, flooding the zone with the drugs and the dope, and you just mentioned the cocaine. Yeah, that's a problem. Y'all coming in here bringing drugs into our communities, bringing criminality into our communities. We ain't talking about all of you, but damn enough 
nobody's betting you and they're sending you right into the black neighborhoods and their black communities that are complaining. So and then on top of that, the whites and that, that, that infested your communities with drugs. Now it's the Spanish yeah. people. Okay. I mean, consumerism we, is consumerism yeah. one way or another. Nobody forces you to do anything you don't want to do. Uh, and, and then, and nobody forced you to flee, but you did that. So why did you not I stay was born in your home? Here, sir. That does that, uh, no, you weren't. No, no, you weren't. I don't believe that. And that's fine. You, you don't have um, to believe uh, or, and if that's the case, you were an anchor baby. So your parents fled. So the fact that you were able to and get a part of that. Court, were brought in no, 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 no. And again, you were able to be anchored here because of, foundation of black Americans. because of black, because of foundational black Americans, you were able to be anchored here. Because of the 14th Amendment, which was a grassroots movement by people like William Nesbitt and others who made it possible for disrespectful, ungrateful tethers like yourself to come over and be born and get all of the benefits of other citizens, sir. So you're welcome. What am I welcome for? For us giving you a place to be anchored so you wouldn't be down there in Guatemala eating a taco, riding a llama to school. That's what. Cool, man, Tariq. I, I, like I said, I didn't come here with beef. Um, like I said, you should travel more. Go to Puerto Rico. Go to shit. Go to Mexico. Go to Puerto Vallarta. Go see those white Mexicans. These are countries that are never going to be Africans. That's the third world. You feel me? We're in the new world. Get over the history that you don't live in. You're in the 21st century, sir. And good night, good and night sir, sir. That's all I'm sir, Just because you fled from your history doesn't mean that we flee from ours. I'm going to always honor and respect my foundational Black American ancestors for sacrificing and building for me and this entire country so that ungrateful tethers like yourself can come over here and eat. I will never stop forgetting them. I will never stop honoring them. I will always mention them, and I will always continue to give them praise. I will never flee like a goddamn coward and then go act ungrateful to people who hosted me, sir. We're built different. Any last words? Not cool beans. Good night. Um, you should search up your, right. your ancestors that, in Africa, sir. That's what you should do. Good night. Right. That right. And you should go back to Chipotle and tell them you need extra hours because you need to go back to night school to get a better education so you won't be so game goofy. But all right, you have a good day. All right. Yeah, right. As Giancarlo, the fleer, want to talk about get over the past. They ain't getting over shit. I ain't you. I'm always honor my people. I will always honor my foundational black American ancestors. They always try to get us to forget about that. No, we remember that. That's why they always trying to take our FBA history out of school. See, when we start talking about foundational black American history, then, oh, let's forget about it. Oh, let's take it out of school. Now, we want to talk about pyramids and ancient Africa. They love that. They give you, well, they'll have an African studies class. Now, when we start talking about this history on this soil, oh, everybody wants to get nervous. We got CC. What's up, CC? Hey, man. Peace, love, hey, and reparations. Bro. You know yes, me. Ma we I start laughing. You know that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, but listen. Let me let me not laugh because I'm so tired. I'm on some little respiratory medication, so I'm uh -oh. a little tired. But listen, I need the space. I'm speaking to the space. Pay attention. Did you hear that villager mentality? Did you hear that ignorance? Did you hear that immigrant that came in here speaking from a space of no history, trying to talk down to us to tell us who we aren't and who we are so that he can erase us, they can erase us and tell us we're not shit. These are mm -hmm. our people who can't compete against us in any shape, form, or fashion. Then he comes on Tariq's stage to try to tell Tariq, of all people, the man that's leading his people to the light, right? So he comes on stage and says, well, my people, well, first of all, your people have done nothing but fled. You came to this country and you contributed nothing 
I can just keep it that simple. There's nothing else to hear about this. These people are leeches and are trying to convince us that we are nothing in the country that we are the greatest in all around the world. I'm going to leave it at that. I want to say so much more. It's not my stage, but I'm <laughs> cracking up. Tariq, yes. I just want to say this. How do these feeble, non-Black American freedmen men even come into our world to try to compete against you or any other Black American freedmen men? Because that's the underlying issue. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Real talk. Thank you, dear. But, you know, you notice they, they always want us to yo, stop living in the past. No, 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 no. No, y'all not going to play that game. We, we're moving forward. Only when we start talking about our history, our ancestry, oh, we need to all move forward. Nah, 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 nah. No, we need to get it right. See, they want us to not talk about the past so that they can go and try to remix the past and put themselves in it. No, we better keep talking about the past and define what went down and document what went down. That's how John Leguizamo gets on TV talking about, yes, man, the uh, us Latinos, man, we done fought in every war. We've been here from the beginning. Like, what? The hell? And that's on us for doing all that black and Latino shit. We sit up here and play that game. We sit there and, and drag them along, trying to be on some kumbaya, like, yeah, yeah, we all in this together. And then they start flipping on our ass. They do it all the time. Just like with Fat Joe. Everybody's just hold up, propping up Fat Joe and Black and Latino, and then Fat Joe just comes out the blue. Yeah, Blacks and Latinos start a hip-hop 50-50 and then runs off and closes the door. And people are like, what? The hell? You see? We sit here and drag people along and then they turn and flip on us and then try to gobble up us and consume us. Because like our sister CC said, look, man, when we look at certain folks who are not FBA, let's just keep it above. These folks ain't got no heroes, man. When you got these folks who come from these places where your family done fled, there's an embarrassment on a subconscious level that goes with that. And when fleeing is the norm, ain't nobody standing up, ain't no activism, ain't nobody standing up against injustice. Everybody's like, let me, what's the next thing smoking to get out of here? When you have that kind of mentality, you don't create heroes. Heroes are created through people standing up against oppression. It's David and Goliath. Who's going to stand up to a big oppressive force like us? We stand up. We're like David and Goliath. That's why people look up to foundational black Americans. We are. We got the mightiest military on the planet that we stand up to. We stand up to it. Even though we're 12% of the population, we stand up to it. You got these people in these other places who got all the resources in the world, all the land masses in the world, and they have to flee from each other because nobody's on code with each other. They can't put their, their heads together and just start building some shit. So the, the little piece of oppression that comes through, they run for the damn hills. You don't have heroes in culture like that. Those type of cultures don't produce heroes. Who are you going to be a hero against? Who are you going to be a hero for? Heroes stay in fight. That's like Mandela. I give South Africa its props. Winnie Mandela, Nelson Mandela. Winnie was out here whooping ass. Winnie Mandela was putting in some work. Nelson Mandela, he stood on his square. He was put in prison, but he stood on his square. That's a hero, and we were propping that up. We were propping up Mandela. We were fighting to get Mandela out over here. We were making noise about that. And, and, and we, we had the grassroots out there in South Africa, too, which they should have broke him out of damn jail a long time ago. That's what Khalid Muhammad said. And I've been out there to Bird Island where the jail is. It Bird Island? Yeah, I think it's Bird Island. It's one of the places. But I've been out there to where the jail is. I've been in Mangela's jail cell. Like Khalid Muhammad said, all y'all out there, y'all outnumbered them. Y'all could have just went and broke him up out of there, which is true. That's what the black maroons used to do. 
in um, North Carolina and Virginia, when they put a black person, they, they called him maroon and put him in jail. They just we break him out. They don't tell you that. They would break folks up out of jail. That's the homie. He ain't about to stay up in there. They break him out and bring him back to the swamp. Yeah, you ain't got to sit around and go along with oppression. CC, she says she got something else to say real quick. CC, hop on, dear. One last thing, Tariq. And I just want to ask everyone in the space to think about this. If we had a versus, a racial versus, an ethnic versus, who wins? We win. We are the only people on the globe fighting white mediocrity. We are the only people on the globe fighting allegedly white supremacy. That's all we need to think about. Everyone else is coming here and just laying down. They left their countries. And this is why I do not respect other men. Black American freedmen, FBA men are the best. Our men did not flee. They uplifted us. Let me just close with this. Nowhere on the planet is anyone else fighting Western imperialism but us. Everyone else has come here and said, like that dude on Vlad, I'm not going to call his name and give him notoriety. And he tried to scream on Tariq. He's a clout chaser. I did a two-hour interview with him, battled him, won. But listen, they said, it's a white man's world. They're all coming here and laying down for who? We are the only people who know that we can battle the demon. Thank you. Peace, love, and reparations. Thank you, dear. All right. Uh, let's get um, TB. TB. Hey, Flex. How you doing, bro? I'm good, brother. How are you? I can't complain, man. Uh, I'm FBA, um, born and raised in St. Augustine, Florida. You been there? Have you visited? Oh, I visited. Yes, indeed. They got the... Um, um, they got that um, fortress down there, St. Augustine, that um, that um, castle. I think the Spanish built that thing down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, the fort, the fort, the fort, the fort. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got the fort down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, man. I, I didn't know if you um, visit the area, man. I tell you, a lot of the folks out there, my family, the Oxendine family, um, pretty pretty big family in St. Augustine. Uh, we had a lot of land in an area called Sanksville that was created by a black family. Uh, their, their last name were the Sanks. And um, we have a historical uh, graveyard cemetery out there. A lot of my family members are there. We only have about about six acres left out of the 40 acres that we had over the years. It's just, you know, some family members pissed it away or, you know, or just sold it, you know. Uh, but I tell you, man, right now at this point, a lot of black people in North Florida, I don't, I don't think we're on cold like we need to be. Um, yeah. Particularly in particularly in St. Augustine, you know. I mean, MLK would have got killed in St. Augustine when they blew up his house. He would have got killed in St. Augustine before he, you know, but he ended up going to Memphis. But they tried to kill him in St. Augustine. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. What, what happened in the, with him in St. Augustine? Um, when he came here to visit, he said that St. Augustine, Florida was one of the most racist areas that he's ever been to in the South. And the Eubanks, the Eubanks family, which is another um, prominent family who fought the white supremacists in St. Augustine, uh, he stayed with them. But every night he had to go to different houses. And when they blew up the house, um, he, he well, they left. You know, he didn't stay in he didn't stay in the um in any house one for one night. He was always changing different houses while he was here. That's how bad it was. It was it was it was terrible out here during that time. But you can't find any um, reports on lynchings or any types of beatings or anything, because, you know, in St. Augustine, that little square, that's where they sold the slaves. I don't know if you remember that square area downtown St. Augustine near next, next to yeah. the fort. They uh, yeah. actually sold the slaves there. But. Uh, yeah. And um, that fort, you know, they put. Um, John Horse and some of the Black Seminoles in that fort, and it was supposed that fort was infamous for being impenetrable. You couldn't break out, and they broke up out of there and got out and escaped in their yeah, fort. Yeah, that, they don't like the fort is made out of a coquina. It's a um, it's a it's a very hard shell that you can find on the beach out here. Um, they always said it couldn't be because uh, the first fort was made out of wood, and then they used, they started using that coquina, um, and then they you know, created the fort. But they also had a fort too called the uh, I think Fort Mosaic. 
Um, yeah, that's yep. Yeah. Fort, that was a uh, yeah. Called they, it Fort Negro. Trying to recreate, yeah. recreate that now, but uh, you know they they having a hard time of looking finding the funds to uh to create it, and they just took some of those um racist monuments down. But a lot of black people had to go through hell to uh to get them. So there was a lot of protests and all that. But they just moved it to a different area. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people don't know about St. Augustine, man, and, the, and, the, and the, the hell that was going on during Jim Crow and whatnot. You know, I remember my great grandmother, her, her, her great grandma Emma. She used to tell me that they she had to walk on the side on the sidewalk. She had to walk on the other side just to, for white folks to get by. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it was definitely a, a scary time, man. You know, I was talking to him. I was out here and um, talking to my one of my great aunts, and uh, she said that. A lot of times when they come out here, they would they would just take your land from you. They will lynch. They will um, basically and just snatch it. Well, you, oh, you're breaking up, brother. But but thank you for the call, brother. My man was kind of breaking up there a little bit. All right, we got a lot of folks in here. But yeah, that's some heavy stuff about um, Saint Augustine. That is some heavy stuff. Let's get um. Let me see. We got a who was this person here? Marceline Harris, who is this person? Marceline Harris. All right, waiting on Marceline. Let's turn your microphone on. Marceline Harris. Bell didn't give me time. Right. Yeah, funky fucking white funky motherfuckers, and you stupid Asian mother. Okay. So we got a, this is clearly a tether and he's inside of a, a delivery van. Dude, you're, you're, you're already mush mouthed. Dude. Nigga, I'm laying down. I'm sitting up now. Your fupa go crazy. Okay. And he's in a struggle apart. Somewhere. He was in a van. You're in a delivery van. You're in a delivery van, brother. I can tell you're in a delivery van. All right. So your knees don't work, you fat ass nigga. You dick. A dude, your snaps are corny. This is more proof that you are a tether who got ridiculed in school because of his hairline. I can hear in your voice how janky your hairline is. Niggas was ridiculing <laughs> that hairline. You buttonless. Dude, and you mush mouth. Your phone is it's two thousand three. And this nigga phone sounds like a damn bean can. All right. So you dusty, musty, and janky as hell. Why does anybody's phone sound that damn janky with all of the technology we have? We got satellites on different planets right now. We got rovers on Mars. And this nigga is still talking on a Blackberry. All right. Nigga, step your game up. And get out that damn delivery van. All right. And deliver the damn orders. Musty Tether. And I'm going to save some root work for you. I got some new flavors, but hopefully your body don't reject it. Okay. Because you sound extremely musty. All right. Okay. Let's see who else we got. Uh, let's get Robert. Let's get Robert in here. We'll get Robert. Tariq. What's up, Robert? What's up, my dude? Much respect to you. Much respect to the beautiful uh, foundational black Americans. Oh, man. I listen to your videos um, on YouTube every night. Cracks me the hell up. Uh, dude, you're so brilliant at roasting fools. It's... Uh, it's awesome. I love it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So what else is on your mind, brother? Uh, I'm just waiting for the um, your hip-hop documentary to come out. So looking yeah. forward to that. And uh, can't wait to see it. When are you? It's coming soon. I'll let you know. I'll, it, we're working on it. It is coming soon. All right. Let's see who they got. We got a lot of folks in here. Let's get it. Let's get, um, let me see. A lot of folks, y'all raise your hand if you're ready to get on. Raise your hand, let's see. 
Let's get Love is Great. All right, so that's an interesting name. Let's get Love is Great in here. Love is Great. That sounds like an album from a nigga who sings jazz and blues. Academics. 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 Well, you clearly don't have any academics because your vocabulary is limited. So you need to go to get you some academics and some education, sir, so that you can expand your vocabulary. All right. That would be great. Academics. Help. Academics. Help. DJ Academics. DJ Academics. DJ Academics. Help. 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 Academics! Academics! You didn't think your material out too much, did you? Academics is after me, Tariq. Is somebody over there tickling your bussy against your will, sir? Is there somebody I need to call? Um, Sir, sir, do I need to call your mama and them to come get you? Because it sounds like somebody's doing something to you. Are you in danger? Are you trying to talk in code? Sir, if somebody's messing with you, I think there's a number we can call. We can get somebody over there to you, sir. All right. DJ Academics is after me, Tariq. You got to help me. He's after me, please. Please. I'm going to send somebody over there to kind of help you out, brother. Sound like they got you tied up with Vaseline around your lips. And they about to make you give up some secrets. So I don't want you to be harmed, sir. So we're going to make sure somebody gets over there to check on you. All right. And remember what happens to you is not your fault. You can still be a man afterwards. (laughs) What the nigga, what they doing to your pussy doesn't define you. All right. Just keep your head, keep your head strong, brother. (laughs) Oh, I shouldn't say that. All right. Pause. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let, me, let me get some more people all right let's see what are the women let me that we, we got to get some women in here we got to get some ladies in here that would be great with all of this real weird energy these niggas are bringing let's, let's get some women in here and i see a lot of the women down there on the bottom y'all chilling just listening in. Y'all get them bonnets off and y'all call up. That's what we need. We need to get that energy a little different in here. And we're in here heavy. And, um, you know, I got to get back to working on the documentary pretty soon. All right. Let's see. Who is Crypto? Crypto Creep. This sounds like a white supremacist troll name. Crypto creep, but what's up, crypto creep? Hey, um, uh, yeah. So I, I haven't seen you, man. I'm Nigerian, okay. I respect you. But I haven't seen there you, you like support. Yeah, I haven't seen you like supporting Niger and working at Paso. And I, I support you. I support Friedman. I, I donate. I do all the things that I'm supposed to be doing and learning and everything. Um, I'm nothing against your brother, but I haven't seen you supporting us over there. We're fighting over there. You, you haven't seen me supporting Nigeria? No, in N- Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea. Oh, oh, yeah, when they're getting the French out over there? Yeah. We're fighting that. Yeah, I've, sp- I've, I've definitely spoken up in support of that. I have. I've said, yes, I'm all for that. Getting them up out of there and, you know, um, trying to get things right over there because the, those white supremacists have been dominating them and dominating their economic system. So, yeah, I've, I'm in full support of that, 100%. Now, now, are you there now, or where are you at now? I am back and forth. Okay. From what, the UK or here? Uh, no, no, you're here in California and also Nigeria and Niger. Okay, okay. So, um, what's the vibe in Niger now? What's the vibe now? The vibe is that, um, well, so today we, well, Niger people, our people over there, today they had to capture one fringe um basically he's like advisor to all the fringe companies that are out there 
more than 50 companies over there. So he, we captured that person and we are not allowing anything in or out of French um, embassy, embassy and uh, doing all the good stuff. Like, you know, we are like, you know, sending our grounds. There you go. Yeah. All right, my man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. All right, let's get um Sophia. Sophia Nicole. It's Sophia Nicole in here. Miss Sophia. Hello. Hey, dear. Hey, I want to know if you could go on Wild and Out. I think that would be an amazing episode. I know you cool with Nick Cannon. Nick. Yeah, Nick is my guy. I love Nick. And I'm cool with all those guys um, who's yes. on there. DC. 85 South. Yes. Yeah, I love those guys. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I got to probably holler at Nick. But um, yeah, shout out to Nick yes. and those guys. When, when do they air? I haven't watched. I haven't seen that Wild and Out in a minute, by the way. I got to check the schedule and see when they air. But um, yeah, I like those guys. I got to get back on the road. People have been wanting me. I haven't done, I ain't been on the road in a long time. Um, I got to start doing my live lecture events. And um, I haven't done that in a minute. I might um, hit up a couple of cities like Chicago, Atlanta, D.C. Yeah, I miss going to those. The last time we went to D.C. was at the reparations rally that was popping. But I got to go out and do some, um, you know, do my thing. Yeah, I've been meaning to get back out on the road. I've just been so busy with these projects, though. But I'm going to get back out there and do what I do. All right, let's see who we got. Um, and I got to get back to editing in a minute. So I'm going to take, I guess I'll take one more call. All right, raise your hand if you want to get on. I'll take one more call. Raise your hand if you want to get on, and we're in here real deep. We are in here hella deep. All right. Raise your hand if you want to get on. All right. I'm looking at the hands here. Okay, the love is, guy. I'm not having you on no more, nigga. And um, the dude who is in the minivan, you ain't getting back on. Okay. Yeah, let's get um. Let's see. Let's get who is this? I want to get some new faces that we haven't seen. Let's get T N Bryan. It's T N Bryan. I, oh, I'm being called on officially. Yeah, Tennessee. Yes, you are. What's up, Tennessee Bryan? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the hashtag FBA stands for, and I would like to ask what it stands for. But I, yeah. uh, I am seeing. I, you know, I, I, I popped it, and uh, I'm seeing some things, and uh, okay. those things look uh, pretty uh, good to me. Uh, it uh, reasonable, uh, reasonable requests for uh, fair treatment and uh, reparations and, yeah. and so forth. FBA is Foundation of Black Americans. Okay, right on. Oh, the, say again. Foundation of Bla Black Americans. Foundational Black Americans. Foundational Black Americans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And well, the meaning where well, we're not immigrants. We're like the black people who descend from <laughs> slaves. Black people who who are here. Basically, the foundation of America. The the idea being like, oh hey, uh, we're Americans. And we helped found this country. Yeah. Yes. We're just we're not immigrants. We're like the only non-immigrant group. Okay. Uh, well, that uh, uh, that's a uh, I like I like where that's coming from. Right. 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 Now, now Tennessee. Now, you're what part of Tennessee you're from? Well, I grew up in East Tennessee, and I went to a high school. Mm -hmm. Where they had a big old giant uh, Confederate flag, because mm -hmm. we were the uh, south. We were the south part of the county, mm -hmm. so we were we were the South High School. Right. Yeah. Now, now Tennessee. Where's your family originally from? In Europe, usually the Tennessee people are like got Irish or Scottish ancestry. Where's your family from? Yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be exactly that. It's going to be Scotch, Irish, English. Uh, I'm a Carter, so that's your that's your English. Uh, yeah, and uh, you're gonna. I'm, I am a 
I am at least proud to, uh, I'm, on the one hand, I'm proud that uh, my ancestors are Quakers who were uh, ardently anti-slavery. But there were Quakers who were slave owners. However, <laughs> you took the uh-huh. words right. Got- you took the words right out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. However, yeah, yeah, don't do yeah, don't do that with me. One of yeah, my Quaker, Quaker, one of my Quaker ancestors was a slave owner. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can't be too mm-hmm. I can't be too high and mighty, can I? Yeah, no, I cannot. And then, no. my black people, when you listen, don't let them hit you with the Quaker thing. Them Quakers <laughs> were slave owners, like William, <laughs> William Penn was one of. Don't them. Don't let them hit you with the Quaker it's, thing. I like that's good. yeah. They'll try to play the Quaker yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't want to play the, the I don't want to play the Quaker tar- card too hard. But yeah. it is it is a it is at least uh, at least we can, at least okay. at least I can at least I can claim some kind of you know anyway but you know but mm-hmm. but hey mm-hmm. look uh, at mm-hmm. the end of the day uh, you can't you can't there's no there's no getting out of it right there's no getting out of the thing okay. right you can't really get out of it you can't really be like oh well because uh, I mean at the end of the day. Right, there's a bunch of a bunch of people from Europe, and they invaded this continent, and then they committed a bunch of genocide, and then they brought a bunch of people over here to be slaves, and it's kind of, you know, it's not, yeah. And then they created oh, a yeah. thing, and they said, "Hey, it's all about freedom." Right, right. right. What? Wait, wait. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. All oh, right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But just FYI, family. Anytime they try to pull the, the Quaker thing. Like the Quaker was anti-slavery, stop them! No, 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 no. Them Quakers were some of them owned slaves. Some of the Quakers were against it, but some of them Quakers owned slaves. William Penn was one of them. He was a big-time slave owner, and that's what Pennsylvania is named after him. All right, so don't let them run that game. You know, you know, nope, 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 nope. Don't try to do that. Yeah. When they try to claim that they got a relative, oh my my great 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 grandparents were Mormons. Uh, shit, don't even let me get on the Mormons. Them hardcore ass racist dog. Don't let none of them try to run that game. Well, my cousin's uncle's grandparent was an abolitionist. Uh, don't run that game either. Them abolitionists were running a con game. They were doing the whole Sally Struthers thing. Well, they're like, hey, look at these poor downtrodden slaves. Send me money. That was their hustle. You, you dig? Susan B. Anthony was a damn abolitionist, and listen to the shit she said about Frederick Douglass. See, when yeah, when you are downtrodden, poor, you know, down bad Negro. Oh look, I have to be the savior. Send me some money so I can pray for this little raggedy Negro. But the minute a black person gets some equality, hey, wait a minute, Frederick Douglass, wait, nigga. Hey, now, come on, I'm still white now. Don't let that nigga get no voting rights over me. Yeah, them, them, them white abolitionist women show their true colors when they start talking about letting black men vote. Their whole platform is like, hey, wait a minute, white man. We still white now. Hold on, I, I, I'm an abolitionist, but I'm still a racist now. Shit, I'm still a white supremacist. Oh no, don't let those Negroes get any rights over us, you punks. The white women's that's what the the feminist movement, that's what that was about. They're trying to punk the white man. Like, come on, don't you have a backbone? You're gonna give these Negroes privileges over me, over women? We're still white, Bob. Look at that Negro. Come on. You're going to have to give me some of them benefits. That was their whole con game. They were punking. That's what the feminist movement was about. They're punking the white man out for privileges for the white women. You know, that was their whole thing. Them white um, abolitionist women became feminists and they were hardcore anti-black racists. Them white feminists were the worst and are the worst now. If you want to be real, look at the Me Too movement and all of that stuff. Look who they target: Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, all that old shit. You know, ain't nothing changed. Now what they do? See what they used to try to do? They try to get, they tried to get black people to be their front Negroes back in the day. They would try that with our sisters, but they, the sisters were way too on code. 
They would try it with the FBA sisters. They tried to get Ida, Ida B. Wells to be their front person to kind of go along with their feminist ideology. Ida B. Wells peeped them out early on. She's like, Yo, y'all hoes is racist. And I don't really rock with y'all like that. Y'all out here, y'all ain't doing nothing about these brothers getting lynched. So y'all, when y'all want to talk about that, come holler at me. Ida B. Wells checked all of them white feminists. They had a, a feminist march somewhere, I think in D.C., and the white woman was like, well, yeah, we're going to have some of y'all black feminists. Just, y'all going to have to march in the back. Ida B. Wells said, kiss the back of my ass. That's what you going to do. I ain't about to march in no back with y'all. I'm cool. So our FBA sisters weren't going along with that. But now they, they, they let the tethered mammies over and they go lock and step with them white feminists. Like the Tarana Burks, who's Caribbean. And got them a Caribbean non-FBA mammy to do the dirty work for them, to be their attack dog for them so they can hide their races behind racism behind those type of people. See, that's one of the reasons why we said, hey, we got to start delineating, man. It's too many riffraff Negroes out here jumping up, not on code with us, doing the dirty work for the white supremacist. So we're like, hey, we need to check everybody's paperwork. Where are you from? Where are your mama from? Which we should have been doing a long time ago. Claude Anderson had been telling us we, we, we need to be checking paperwork. And we better late than never, shit. Better late than never. And I'm not saying that about all of our non-FBA folks, because if you are riders, that's cool. If you are a rider, come on and then back us up. But yeah, y'all sending us these Tarana Burks and Candace Owens and all of these folks? Nah, not cool. Uh-huh. And we're, well, y'all are in here heavy. We're still in here deep tonight. We are still in here deep tonight. Let's get the um, fake Marjorie Taylor Greene account. <laughs> We got the the Marjorie Taylor Greene parody account. What's up, Marjorie Taylor Greene parody account? <clears throat> Hop on. Marjorie Taylor Greene parody account. Um, turn your microphone on. All right. You can speak. All right. You can speak. All right, must be a dude behind the account, and he don't want to let folks know he's a dude. But go ahead. We know you're a guy. Just go ahead and speak, man. Just get it on out. We know you're a dude. We know it's a catfish account, but just speak. Go ahead, man. All right. I don't know why you raised your hand to get up in here. You might have did it by mistake. And we know you're a man, so just go ahead and say what you need to say. And then we'll give you T.S. Giselle's number and maybe y'all can get together and get some equality popping off. All right. All right. Is T.S. Giselle, you still in here? Oh, yep, you still there. I thought you about to go to bed, T.S. Giselle. You still got your big back ass up in here. Get in that person's DMs and holler at him, T.S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's get um. Oh, uh, we got a lot of folks in here, man. Um, let me see. Let's get Willie Willie Dynamite in here. Cause Willie Dynamite had his hand up early. Willie Dynamite, what's happening? Peace, peace, brother. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, uh, uh. uh. Shouts out to you, brother. I just want to congratulate you and actually thank you on putting out this hip hop documentary. I'm from the South Bronx, by the way, and it was much, man, it was much uh, needed, brother. And I appreciate you. Be and um, uh, just to be clear, that this Puerto Rican's creating hip hop actually has been a lot. It's actually even been certain around circulating around the community since the mid '90s. So I, I just want to thank yeah. you so much for that, brother. And there's actually two things on my mind. Uh, one, as far as the documentary was concerned, I was wondering if you was able to get Grand Wizard Theodore, the uh, the innovator of the scratch. Right. I was reaching, I reached out to him several times, never 
able to get with them, but it's cool. It's all right. I never got with him, but I did want to. I did reach out to him several times. All right, cool. So my, the second thing that's on my mind, um, me growing up in uh, New York City and being, um, I'm, I'm FBA on both sides of my family, full FBA, and growing up around yeah. all of these non FBAs, one thing I've noticed is that they don't uh, have family reunions. And I'm not sure if that's the experience for uh, other people, uh, other FBAs around the country that have the experiences with non-FBAs. But if so, uh, could you elaborate on that thought, please? Thanks, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of them, they don't have family reunions because their families are in another country. And the, the, the last thing they want is a reunion with them. See, that's another thing. They ain't trying to go back there with their families. I, I don't want to be mean spirited. I really don't want to be mean spirited. But a lot of these, hey, my man made a good point. They don't have family reunions, and they ain't really trying to go back there and get with their families. They distance themselves from them family members back home. These folks don't be talking to their mama like that no more. Their mama still back home somewhere. The ones who didn't get anchored here, but yeah, they don't. A lot of folks, they ain't going back. Y'all have heard interviews with people like Kodak Black. Remember, go look up that interview, Kodak Black. Like, I ain't never going to Haiti. <laughs> don't don't let them fool you guys. They sit over here with us. I'm over here making money. I'm gonna send it back home so I can retire. Man, nigga, please. That's all cap. They ain't going nowhere near. This is the lottery for them. They ain't never going back. And the last thing they're gonna do is go back, baby. Don't let them run that. We're going to go back home and retire. Stop. Stop it. They ain't going back. They ain't trying to have a reunion. Nothing. They ain't about to go back to none of that. They don't want to see their failed family members. They don't want to go see that. They, they act like the niggas don't exist. They don't correspond with them. They, they're cool on them. Yeah. They are cool. They coming over here to find a white woman or a zaddy. You know? They come over here and try to find the whitest person they can find if they can get them. If we want to keep it about, not all of them, but you know, a lot. Not all, but a lot. I ain't trying to put everybody in the same box. But yeah, yeah, ain't no reunions because you got to go back home for a reunion. That's where your families are. And then, you know, you ain't doing that. You know, whereas, you know, we go down south or we go, you know, we I, I just had a family reunion up in Vegas. And um, shout out to my family. I had a wonderful family. I met a lot of new people who are from deep down in Alabama and other places. So, yeah, we like to get together and vibe. And, you know, that's our thing. You know? And again, I'm not trying to throw dirt on my, my non-FBA family. Not trying to do that at all. But y'all don't be going home like that. Okay, we got somebody with a picture of Gandhi, the dude with Gandhi on his thing. What's up, man? The guy with Gandhi on his picture. The name in Africa. Turn your microphone on. All right. Yes, Tariq. How are you? I'm good. How are you, buddy? Not so bad. Not so bad. Yesterday I was listening uh, to your interview. Was it with the uh... No jumper or something like that. Um, my, oh, when, when did you see it? Um, uh, it was yesterday. It was yesterday because I kind of, uh, you know, go back into your archive and stuff like that. Was it the newest interview? Because I just did one with them a week or so ago. No, no. And it was the old, I, I think it was the old one. It was the old one. Okay, got it, got it. I was about to say, okay, yeah, okay, but yeah, what about the interview? Yeah, so because what I don't understand at times, you seem uh, sympathetic to us, uh, you know, guys coming from Africa, but then other times you are kind of so harsh on us. Okay, so uh, for example, I personally. Like, I wouldn't stereotype the entire foundation black Americans, okay? That all yeah. you guys are this and this and that. And I like you guys. I like you, Tariq. I follow uh, Brother Omar Johnson. Uh, then I, I was also following Brother Polite and all those kind of people because of, you know, what you guys talk about. But then uh, 
there are some things that you actually say that are kind of hurting, you know, the things that you say, or, you know. Like what? Like what? No, like the things you just mentioned there about us, you know, going back to our families and stuff like that. I don't think that stuff is fair, man. And some of us, we have seen things that we also don't agree with in our country because, you know, like the Pan-African, this, this is something I don't agree with Dr. Omar, the Pan-African type, where they try to say, okay, as black people, we're all supposed to come together and stuff like that. And then you hinted on something that is very interesting where you said you tried to, you came to the continent and tried to get citizenship, you know, in, on some of the African countries and you couldn't get it. Now, that's a very big problem that even us people living on the continent, we face. If I'm from Uganda, I cannot go to Nigeria and get citizenship. Nigeria, they can't even give me land. So these uh, problems that we do have, like the challenges you talk about, not only do they affect you as a foundation black American, but they also affect even us, uh, what you would call like Africans or native Africans or something like that. I don't know the term that you would like to use. Right. You know, they do affect right. us. But, and I think as a person who you who has traveled widely, I think you should be more lenient, especially, you know, when we come over to, 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 to America to try to make a life and maybe go back home and try to build again in, in one way or the other. And for me, I think... Hey, here's the here's the problem. Well, here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I got to come. I know you're kind of going on and on. See, the problem is we don't. You say we got to be more lenient, and we got to understand that nobody's getting citizenship over there easily in the different countries. That's the problem. See, they come trying to tell us that we need to go over here, and we all need to go join hands, and y'all ain't even doing it with each other. That's a harsh reality. See, a lot of y'all don't want the harsh reality. And I rock with African brothers and sisters. I go over there and actually they show me a lot of love. But I'm going to keep it honest. It could be better if everybody got on code. There's too many damn black folks over there for a handful of white folks to come over there and be dominating your ass. That ain't a good look. Y'all need to hear that. In South Africa too. I go to South Africa. The people love me. I love them. They show me nothing but respect. I show them respect. But in South Africa, it's way too many of y'all for a small group of white people to be living over here in condos and right across the street, y'all in them raggedy shanty towns and townships. You understand? That's not a good look and you need to hear the harsh reality of it. It's Y'all don't get on code over there. Y'all have to get rid of those tribal differences. Y'all still look at yourselves as all these separate different hundreds of tribes and no, y'all are not getting on code over there. So that has to be taken care of. The harsh reality is, is way too many of y'all over there to be dominated and not working together. You got all the resources and y'all got y'all sending people like Akon over here trying to talk to us to get us to come over there and y'all off code is fucking hell. These are the realities. It sounds harsh because it is harsh. Y'all stop sending folks over here trying to sell us Wakanda and y'all don't have it popping. And you can get it popping. It's too many of you to not get it popping. Resources and money and, and, and finances is based on people activity. People are money. I want y'all to understand that concept. People are money. Money is people. It's what people do and the time and energy spent and how on code they are with each other. That's what money is. Y'all should not be over there hungry and dusty the way you are looking to us to come over there. And I'm like, well, shit, at least give us some dual citizenship. Oh, no, nigga. Then damn it, man. The fuck you want us to come over here for? You can't even give us some basic stuff, but you want us to come over there and drop off a bag. That sounds harsh because it is harsh. And we're saying, hey, man, we, we you know what? We're going to do what we do over here. Y'all ain't really serious. That's a harsh reality. Y'all not really serious about really building nothing on a black unified front because y'all can't even get a unified front over there amongst each other. So the thing is, when y'all get over here, then there's a lot of damn disrespect coming from cats. The nerve, the temerity. That's where we're like, hey, nigga, really? So when we start checking people, it's 
going to be harsh because that's a harsh reality. Y'all can't bring that same jive mentality over that you've had there. You can't bring that here because we're like, we're not going to have that. So, yeah, the reality is harsh because y'all not checking the riffraff class of your people. When y'all send one of your people over here, like that one Sambo who was up in Michigan running for office, talking about we don't need Black History Month, with some African Sambo, I forgot what his name and don't even care, the real ashy dude, talking about we don't need, we don't need Black History. What do you mean, we? How you go to somebody else's spot talking about what they don't need so you can get brownie points with white folks? You see, that kind of mentality, uh, too many of y'all bringing that over here. It failed you there, and we don't want it to fail us here. We don't want failure mentalities being infused in our culture. We have enough to deal with already. You understand? I agree, sir. But then uh, there's one thing that you mentioned about us getting rid of our tribes and stuff like that and that sort of identity, which I agree with. But don't you think by you creating the term, because I was listening to the background of Foundation Black America and how you came about with the term, don't you think that you're creating a new tribe within a, the black community in America? We've already... Wouldn't, been, that, wouldn't that be as tribalism as well because it's some sort of identity that, you're, that you have created to some extent? We, we've already been a distinct ethnic group. The problem is we've let other people name us. That's then our, why would you recommend as Africans to get rid of our tribes and identities? No, no. Get rid of the tribalism as far as not working with each other. That's what I'm saying. You can keep your... Look, if you have a tribal identity and a lineage, that's fine. But your tribalism goes into, well, I'm against this person, I'm against that person, and y'all try to harm each other. We don't do that. We don't try to harm people just because we don't do that type of shit. When other people come over here, we, hey, that's our African brother. Come on, kick it with us. That's fine. We don't have a problem. In fact, hey, come, you live next door to me. You cool. We cool. We're cool. But we're identifying what our ethnic groups are, and we're defining them, and we're naming what our ethnic group is. And we're letting other folks know, you can't be our representative. We're still cool. We can work together. But we don't really want a lot of non-FBA people jumping up, trying to act as spokespersons for us, just the same way you don't want any people representing your tribal group who's not a tribal member. We're not trying to harm people, though. It ain't getting into that Hotel Rwanda type shit that y'all got into over there. We're just saying we're drawing the line when it comes to representation. And all of these other groups, they already have names for our ethnic group. Akata, Jarir, Abids. They got all these weird names over there that they have for us. So we said, you know, we're going to define ourselves. And that's what we're doing. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that, that makes sense. But uh, okay, okay, yeah, that that one I agree with. I agree with. But then, okay, finally, I would like to ask a question. So now, yes. a brother like me, for example, if I come to America, and uh, you know, I don't want to disrespect the FBA, the culture, and anything of that sort. How would I start? Because what I've seen, even amongst our communities, is. For example, the st- you know the stereotyping is kind of there. The things that you guys put across that you mentioned, you know, they they kind of come across. But uh, when we don't get to hear from the real FBA, right. then uh, th- that's when it gets you know to generation after generation after generation to some extent. So for brothers that are just coming in or that are just coming up in America and all these other uh, you know countries. Uh, what would you recommend? Where would we? Where can we start from? And I, I really like your idea about the museum, and I yeah. like your documentary about the hip hop. I think those are things that you know people like us should be looking into to understand, uh, you know, the other side of the story that uh, has been concocted by you know the Western media or the white supremacists and stuff like that, because they do really have an agenda. So. A person coming to America, w- what are the right places that they should be looking for, uh, you know, to come and have, you know, this entire information, uh, you know, about the FBA, uh, you know, the history of uh, the, the FBAs in America, slavery and all that kind of stuff? 
Well, yeah, I mean, just, that's basic history. I mean, our history is... A, I mean, no, the problem, the reason why I ask that, Tariq, is because there's so much sources out there, for example, that you would go and look online. Not everything that is online is actually, you know, uh, uh, is actually, um, is true, okay? Most of the things have been skewed. I, I remember there's a clip I watched of uh, Ben Carson who was talking about, uh, I don't know if those people were FBA, but I think they were FBA, that had invented so many, that had done so many I inventions. Uh, there, there's so much stuff that you talked about in that podcast with No Jumper about the movies that have been done in Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, the, the movie called Help, and all those other movies, 12 Years a Slave, and how they, you know, kind of... Uh, you know, skew, and you know they try to show the white, you know, the white supremacist as the the heroes and stuff like that. So we want like sources where that are FBA sources. For example, if I look at a documentary done by Tariq about hip hop, I know this is the real story about the F, about FBA and hip hop. Yeah, but not some. You, you get what I mean, yeah. So what what kind of sources or what kind of uh, you know, okay, I, I gotta land his plane. God damn, Mumbutu. Yeah, that's another thing. Boy, y'all get long wind. I had to land his plane. Cause damn, he asked a question and then you go kind of babble for 30 minutes, brother. And, nigga, that's that's one thing. Okay, you wanna help out? Shut your asses up at some point and listen. That's one thing. Let's do that. Brother, I've been wanting to ask you a question for the last 20 minutes. You won't be quiet, brother. And let me tell you something. When y'all do that, that looks kind of weird. It, it, it looks deceptive. When motherfuckers talk too much, and then let me talk to my, my non-FBA folks. Let me tell you something. When y'all do all that talking, that raises our antennas. That makes us think, okay, this nigga's about to pull a scam. All right? When you're doing all that damn talking and you won't shut the fuck up, that makes us think, okay, this nigga about to try to get my banking information to some. I got to watch him. Y'all cut that out. All right? Because he's trying to act like he's asking a genuine question, but it's just going on, just bab. This dude just went bab. I'm trying to answer you. Well, listen, if I go to America, if I, what, what kind of resources do I need to see to learn about FBA? Because I, I look at Wikipedia and there's no information on Wikipedia. I, and I look for other sources. So I'm just asking you, where did I get information about FBA? Because when sometimes I listen to Uma, Uma Johnson and Broda Polite and others, I don't know where to get the information from. Um, ben Kassan had said something. I just don't know where to get the information. So I just want to know from you, where exactly do I get the information? Because I was looking at PBS and there was... Um, it was a documentary on slavery, and I didn't know what they were talking about, and I wasn't sure. So if I could just get some information from you, because I was, I was reading a book at the library, and it was about the Maroons, and I heard you did a movie about the Maroons. I was looking to see, and then I wanted to get some more information about it. And I went to the grocery store, and I saw someone who looked like Cicely Tyson, and it reminded me of Harriet Tubman. And I wanted to know, was it accurate if Harriet Tubman looked like Cicely Tyson, or what age is Cicely Tyson? I just wanted to know. And then I had an Uber customer who was looking like Morgan Freeman, and when I saw him at first, I thought it was Nelson Mandela, and I wanted to get the history. And this nigga just went on and on, nigga. Brother, what, okay? Brother. All right, y'all pump your brakes. That's another thing. Y'all, my, my non-FBA people, when you come over, stop talking so much. All right? I don't know what that shit is about. That's that that gives real scammy vibes, but the motherfucker just won't stop talking. All right, you know now he's doing all that talking. I'm in here checking my pockets. I'm like shit. Did this nigga send somebody over here to get me? Yeah, come on. You know that's one thing. You know, slow down with that. All right. Oh Lord, my goodness, we're in here. Y'all got me in here, and I'm supposed to be editing. The the Marjorie page, did you want to say something before we left? 
the Marjorie fake account. Marjorie gonna turn your microphone on and you're just gonna sit here. Um, you know. All right, Marjorie, pop on, say something, brother. Go ahead and say something. Stop, stop muting your mic. You're clearly a a black man. He's I don't even think he's a white man. I think it's a black dude pretending to be a white woman. I think he might be a queen too. I think he's a queen because them queens like to pretend to be white women. I think this is a, a black trans dude pretending to be a white woman. So we we respect your pronouns, brother. You can say hi to everybody. Say what's up to the people in the room. You can say hi to people. Oh, this big stepper, the Puerto Rican. Hold on, hold on. Speaking of Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican troll. <laughs> Just stepper, the Puerto Rican damn troll. Hop on, stepper. What's going on, stepper? Yo, uh, did you hear about those activists that were indicted in Atlanta for um, Rico? Those uh, people who was uh, uh, trying to go after Cop City. Just wanted to get uh, the weight that up a little bit more. How they how they got those people over there for Rico charges. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I did hear about that. And um, yeah, that's some real weirdo shit that they're trying to do down there in Atlanta. Um, yeah, Atlanta's on one right now with Fonnie Willis and your, your people down there. Um, I told y'all, Fonnie is not nobody's. I've been I've been warning people about Fonnie. Fanny the Mammy, Fanny Willis, Fanny Willis, however you want to pronounce it. I've been warning people about her before she got elected. I was begging people not to vote for Fanny the Mammy. I knew that was a problem. All right. Okay. Uh-oh. Now, Chattical, I've had you on before. Chattical, what's up, man? Chattical Coda, what's up, man? Morning. How's it going? I'm good, Chattical. How are you? I'm good. I just uh, woke up probably like two hours ago. I went to go and get some. Uh, went to go and get some Mexican food. It's pretty good. You uh, you like Mexican food? Actually, it's like Tex-Mex. It's not like real Mexican food. You know what I mean? Oh Lord. Anyway, so how how have you been, sir? I don't know what you're talking about. How you been? Oh, I've been good. I just uh, you know I was sleeping all afternoon. Got got. Well, that, that meth will do that to you. But go ahead. Oh. Chattical, hop on, sir. I got I got double muted. I got hit by the double mute glitch. Um, yeah, I don't do meth. I just do cocaine, not uh, not meth. Right? Yeah. No, if you did, if you did cocaine, you wouldn't go to sleep. You'd still be up running around. No, no, no. That's, that meth yeah, that's why I was up all night last night, and then I went to bed at probably like eleven o'clock this morning. Yeah, so I yeah, just woke yeah, up not too long ago. Man, all right. So, how's everything? Is your trailer park okay? I, I heard well, there were tornadoes. I don't. There. I don't live in a trailer park. I live in Airbnbs because I travel for work. But um, I'm in a pretty good one right now. Um, I was in a pretty good one before. It's always interesting, like whatever city I go to, uh, seeing like the different living accommodations that are available. Isn't been pretty good. Well, well, hopefully you and your trailer don't don't get carted off in a tornado, brother. You got to chain that trailer down to a tree because this is tornado season and there's a lot of tornadoes out there. I don't want you to lose your trailer and it just gets swept up in a tornado and then all of a sudden you're in the land of Oz. All right. So we don't want that to happen. You and your meth pipe, you know, following the yellow brick road, trying to find some more crack and meth. You know, that's horrible. But anyway, uh, Okay, we need my man. Who's in here? We need my man. Okay, who's that? Okay, so this is you're promoting some people in here. Okay. The Marjorie Taylor fake account is up here trying to recommend people without getting on. You need to get on. And we know that you're a dude. Just go ahead and say hi. You know. All right. Anyway, let me see. Let me get you out of here because you ain't saying nothing. I've been on here for a long ass time tonight. 
We've been on here for a minute. And um, anyway, let me get out of here, man. So let me do some editing because it's almost one o'clock out here. Um, look, go to Hidden History Museum to give a nice contribution to the Hidden History Museum because we are going through stuff. So we need the grassroots to look out. That would be greatly appreciated. And go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio, and subscribe to my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. So when I do my live shows, you guys will be right there getting notified. Okay? Go right there. Now, there's one more person. Let's get Dr. Swaggy in here before I go. Dr. Swaggy. What's up, Dr. Swaggy? Yo, what's up, brother? This, is this the Tariq Nasheed? Yeah, it's the Tariq Nasheed. Now, where are you from, Dr. Swaggy? Uh, I live in... Wait, you want to know where I'm from? From? Well, you you sound like you're from Canada. Oh, that's actually like I get that a lot. It's very insulting, but I know you mean like that. Yeah, no, I'm not from Canada. Right. Now, why is that insulting? By the way, I'm I, I'm gonna be real with you. I actually don't know, but I I just it's kind of like a vibe, you know, like Canadian, like really nigga, like Drake okay. and shit. So you don't like. So yeah, you don't like being associated. Yeah, with Yeah, no, sorry, I don't want to make that a big deal, but um, I am in the U.S. <laughs> I'm in Maryland. Okay, but where you where you from? Where you from? Because I hear an accent. Where an accent? From? Yeah, I hear. No, it. no I was from? born here, born in Tennessee, actually, Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, I still hear an accent, brother. What are you trying to you get your accent? Okay, so well, you get why don't you guess? Because you get your, sorry, you get your you get your accent from your mother. Oh, word. where's your mother? My where is she born? She's born in Nigeria. Now, how hard is that to say? I, I just know who you are, and I feel like you might fuck my, like fuck me up in this live if you know I'm African. <laughs> you know I, I, I can already tell. Damn, there's nothing wrong with that, brother. Just let's just get some clarity. There's nothing right, wrong gotcha, with that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, now you from you you were born in Tennessee. Yeah, my 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 parents immigrated here. I was born in Tennessee. I, I live now in Maryland. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um. Now, why do you have these? What kind of flags are these you have in your thing? Um, Those are not Nigerian. You are correct. Those are Russian flags. Okay. Why do you got Russian flag? Is that a Russian flag? That doesn't look like a Russian. Well, why do you have those flags in your thing? Just in support for the the Ukrainian war and stuff. So, okay. You want want Russia to smash down on I'm not going to lie. Look here. Yeah, they did. Well, the Ukraine, well, they were doing your people kind of dirty, you know, throwing the some of the Nigerians out, you know, so they were doing them real dirty in the Ukraine. So I'm, I'm not mad at you. You're right. Yeah. No, nah, that is completely true. But like, I, All right, so, so what's on your mind? What's on low key? I just came up here cause I wanted you to unblock my girlfriend. Who's your girlfriend? Buddy? Um, her name, her, what's her name on Twitter here? You blocked her like probably like four or five years ago, but she's been really upset about it ever since. Uh, what's her name? And why did I block her? What she do? She must have said some some weird tether shit. What, what, she what, what? No, I'm I'm like that's a true story. But I'm like, I'm joking about bringing it up. Is that like new? Like the, like a new term you guys use? Like tether? It's pretty good. Like you guys branding is amazing. Like like the FBA branding is so fucking good. Honestly, what the fuck? Yeah, but yeah, you, you uh, did. Did I really block her? Or what was the? Deal? Um, she she was like really. She was like black feminist. So like honestly, you probably had a good reason. <laughs> I'm keep it real with you. <laughs> wow. Now, what were you doing with a black feminist? Because they don't like black. Feminists. I was like fucking her, and we were like together. Nah, she she liked black dudes. I think, kind of. I think deep down they do, but you know, higher up they don't. You know. Right. All right. Okay. So anyway, Doctor Swaggy, anything constructive? Sound like you just wanted to call up to shoot the shit. I so. low key, I low key didn't even think you would bring me up here. <laughs> so I nothing to fucking say, but I will think of a question. After. All right, thank you so much. All right, let's get Kanye's breast in here. Kanye breast. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm just a huge fan, and I just I've watched your documentaries for 
years and it it's just been a pleasure and an honor and I'm just really looking forward to the hip hop documentary and that's all I really want to say. I'm just really, really grateful to you for all the work that you've put in and I live in Orlando, Florida, but I look forward to being able to visit the museum um, soon. Just keep going, oh, yeah. and thank you so much. Look, I appreciate you. What do you, by the way, what do you do down there in Orlando? I am a filmmaker and photographer, so um, oh, cool. that's what I do. But I don't have a red cam, so that's why I didn't hit you up. <laughs> oh, yeah. You prefer yes. red cams, um, but... Um, just know, like we we're down here. We 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 ride for you, heavy. I'm looking at your picture. You got a little something going here. I see you got a little something going. Where's your man? <laughs> I um, let's get to that. Listen, I'm single now. <laughs> so how come you single? Why are you single? You don't look like you're supposed to be single. Why are you single? I um well, I got divorced a few years ago, and I'm just I'm just working, just just working. Okay. So. How long were you married? I was married for five years. How many? Do y'all have any kids? I have two children. Okay. Um, and they are older, so I have my children uh, way younger. So they they aren't by him, but we, oh shit! Oh. But we did, oh shit! He, he we had a really decent run while we had it, and yeah. How old are you? How old is your oldest child? Child, you ready? <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Uh-oh, my old my oldest child is seventeen. Okay, you got a big kid. Okay, well, damn, you didn't look like you have a seventeen year old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I started. I was I was a I was really really young when I had her, and then my second child came. Um, and she's she's twelve. So they're they're okay. they're grown almost. <laughs> Your your ex husband was he Haitian Jamaican? What was he? Wow, no, my my ex husband is Black American. Okay. Yeah, we're all Black Americans here. Proud FB. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. But there's a lot of you know Haitians and people down there in Orlando. Oh my so. God, I can't even tell you. So I'm a Chicago native, and I've been living down here for ten years. And I was very ignorant, and when I came down here, I was like, Oh my God, you run into everybody. Everybody's not American down here and yeah. the way they treat us is insane. It's absolutely insane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, oh, yeah. but yeah. But um but at the same time like we rock our shit. We we rock ours like real heavy. <laughs> you know, it's like now you you know one thing I've been able to learn from you and several of the other master teachers is to know our history so that way we can always speak truth to power. So they ain't getting away with this shit around me. <laughs> real talk. Real talk. Thank you so much, dear. Real talk. Lovely sister. Deep sister. What's up, brother Terrain? Let's get Terrain in here. Brother Terrain. I'm good. How are you, fam? I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm just actually doing some of what you're doing. I got to do some editing for some content this morning. I'm just trying to motivate myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm in, up here dragging ass, procrastinating with everybody, and I'm supposed to be over here editing. So, you know, I already know. Yeah, man. Um I just wanted to get your thoughts on this whole brick situation, man. It's been fascinating. Um, I made a comment on my page um, last night before I crashed out a little bit. I basically said black men deserve an apology. And I woke up like an hour ago. It's three o'clock where I am. And pretty much, man, my whole page is flooded with people saying black men deserve to die. Y'all don't deserve a damn thing. And it's just fascinating how this one incident has opened up so many um people's feelings about how they really feel about brothers, man. And I'd love to get your thoughts on it. Real talk. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Even though this brick, the, the, the brick lady, the Somali woman, and this thing is like a hoax. Um, and people are still standing on, yeah, it's a hoax, but we still hate you niggas. They're not going to let the hate go to waste. They're not going to let the hate go to waste. And again, a lot of the, this anti-male hatred it's coming from the tether class. Let's be clear. A lot of it is coming from the tether class because uh, shout out to the FBA sisters. They they don't like the bullshit either. They know that the woman is full of shit and they've been calling the woman out. The, the FBA sisters have been calling that scamming ass Somali chick out. But the tether women, the bedwinchers and the divestors, 
you know, they're going to stand on it. You know, they're like, we don't give a damn. And we we don't know if it's a hoax or not. Yeah, it's a, clearly a hoax at this point. But they're going to stay on their anti-black male hatred because, you know, they still got to get brownie points from Zaddy, you know. So it is what it is. But anyway, let me get out of here, man. Um, it's been real. Puppy Akute, Lola Vuve to the family. I'm out.